Good morning, everyone. It's one of the biggest days in American soccer, at least for the men, that is. We are in the round of 16. U.S. Netherlands coming up. This is the MLS Club and Country Watch Along Show. I am Andrew Wiebe with a trio of legends. Charlie Davies, you know him well. He's got the colors on. Good morning, Charlie. Bruce Arena, been here before, been there, done that. We'll get a little bit of uh, Bruce experiences. Then Paul Moduka, who has a unique perspective into the Dutch experience as well as the American one when it comes to the beautiful game. Good morning, everybody. Christina Uncle is with us as well. We're hoping, praying that we do not have to go to Christina unless it's under very positive U.S.-centric circumstances. But if there is a refereeing controversy, we will talk to Christina about what exactly has gone on, what it means, and uh, what the laws say about it. Charlie, good morning. Good morning. Give me a little energy, man. I'm, I'm chugging coffee. My kids are literally fighting a babysitter above my head. It is a wonderful, not stressful at all morning. I'm excited. I'm not nervous at all. Not, not a single ounce of nervousness in me right now. Yeah, neither neither am I. Not not at all. I mean, I just remember watching that, <laughs> that last 15 minutes of Iran and just thinking, oh, I'm sick to my stomach. But we, we finally got it done. Heading into this one, I still feel those nerves. I, I'm optimistic because I think the Netherlands are a team that are so patient in possession. They're not a team that has that killer instinct where we, we want to score one, two, three. If they get the lead, they they allow you to get back in the game because of the way they play. So I'm 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 cautiously optimistic about this one. I know Pablo Luka can't is is caught He's in torn. between. Yeah. He's torn. You got Paul. You got a Dutch wife. You've been in the U.S. for a, a minute now. Where you stand on this day? I'm being Norwegian neutral. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I'm going. It's a great game of football with uh, with two countries that is close to my heart. And, uh, you know, it will be a difficult one. But either way, I'm happy to, you know, I'm happy to watch a great game. Should be a good time. You can watch in the U.S. on Fox and Telemundo. This is a watch along. I will repeat that over and over and over. I'm watching the chat on YouTube as well as Twitch. But, folks, this is a watch along. We are watching it with you. We are alternative commentary. We are someone to watch with. If maybe you're at home, you don't have anybody to watch with. You're an isolated soccer fan on this day, and you want to scream, cry, laugh, whatever the emotion comes to you uh, with somebody else. Bruce, what are they thinking? What are they doing in that locker room right now? You've been there. We're sort of taking cues off the bench. We see Josh Sargent in street clothes. We know he won't play. But what is the mindset? What do you like emotionally on a knockout round World Cup day? Well, listen, everyone's a bit nervous, but I think uh, they're both excited and confident. They played a hard 270 plus minutes to get here into the round of 16. And, and it wasn't easy. I think from game one, when they weren't able to get three points against Wales, they've been uh, under a little bit of pressure or a lot of pressure, I should say. And I think they're greatly relieved uh, after the result uh, against Iran. And uh, now, uh, as people say, they're playing with house money. And I think this is a good matchup. I, I, I think we match up favorably uh, with the Dutch. I think we have uh, an advantage in the goal. Uh, we're stronger in the goal. Uh, we have better team speed. I, I think the challenge for our team today is our center backs have really not been tested, and they'll be tested today. So I think our last three players centrally, our two center backs and Adams, are going to be challenged with the Dutch top three players. And to me, that's going to be the difference in the game today. Memphis Depay, Cody Gakpo, we know they're in the lineup. We'll get you those in just a second. You see the bracket right here, Netherlands, U.S. We're about to watch this thing. T-minus 10 minutes or so. Uh, Argentina, Australia on the other side. So potentially, you would think, odds would say, if the U.S. or let's the Netherlands, whoever, probably going to have Messi and Argentina on the other side. They've recovered after that loss to Saudi Arabia. Let's get into the lineups right now, Charlie, and we can uh, take a deep dive with you and Bruce and Pa. Here's what we got. Two changes. It's just Zimmerman in for CCV, and Jesus Ferreira is your starting nine. Tell me about Jesus. Do you like this move from Greg? I'll, I'll tell you after the game. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's one of those things where I, I thought this is where you, you, you have a good opportunity to move Timothy Weah to the nine because he had been playing striker in the, in, with this team. When they have possession, he shifts into – a more central role so that's when you could add brendan aronson or Gio reina because you you want to overrun the midfield and i'll bet on our midfield all day versus the dutch and it's going to be important because the reason why 
our defense hasn't been tested that much is because we've controlled the game. We've controlled the tempo. The midfield trio of Musa, McKinney, and Adams have absolutely been dominant. So I I'm going to be watching them to make sure that they don't allow Frankie De Jong to, to play those line-breaking passes because he has 26. He he's the leader across the World Cup in terms of being able to, to play those penetrating uh, passes. Bruce, when you look at this uh, 11, who's the player you center in on? Is it is it Reem and Zimmerman? Is it Adams? Who's the guy that you look at and say, okay, he has to have a big day? I think it's going to be Reem. I think he's going to be tested for the first time in this World Cup and is defending. Because uh, against Wales and, and Iran, there, there wasn't a threatening player in the attack. And I don't know what England was doing when they played us. Uh, they weren't very threatening at all. So today they're going to be challenged. And it's the first time that we're going to be playing against two strikers. You know, typically, most teams uh, line up with one number nine. Today, they're going to have to deal with two of them. And it'll be interesting to see how they do. Paul, as we look at the Netherlands lineup here, uh, Gakpo, one of the players of the tournament so far, three goals so far. Memphis Depay, we know how good he is. De Jong, Klaas, and Darun in the midfield. What do those center backs have to deal with from this Netherlands team? Well, I mean, uh, expect a pragmatic Dutch team. You know who's going to rely on the individual qualities of uh, Kagbo, De Jong, and uh, Depay. And as to Bruce said, uh, for the US, they haven't have been tested yet, and uh, and they're going to play against a Depay who will love to come into the ball, maybe looking to drag out uh, Zimmerman or Rim. And then you have the runners of uh, Kagbo behind as well, together with Klassen. So it's going to be a it's going to be a classic chess chess game, especially from uh, Van Gaal, understanding that. Uh, he played the same system back in 2014, you know, when they when they reached the uh, uh, semi-finals and become third. So the game is going to be won, I believe, in midfield and with the quality of players that uh, both teams do possess. But the Dutch going to be pragmatic. They've been unbeaten for 18 games, and there's and there's a reason to it. What are they thinking about this matchup back in Holland? Do you think? Well, I mean, in Holland, obviously, um, no. In Holland, there's a saying. There's 17 million head coaches every time the Dutch national team play. Everybody has an opinion on it. But the total football that the, the Dutch are famous for is not there. Maybe it's a lack of the quality coming underneath. But with Van Gaal, he's going with a primitive style that he knows. He respects the US because he also said it in the media the US has been the few teams who had a system and playing within their system and playing very well. So uh, I think it's a matchup that uh, that they look forward to. But as well, it's going to be a chess chess game. And I think um, the individual players from both sides could make the difference. Uh, Pod, Jeff on the chat says it's Switzerland that's neutral, not Norway. So just and obviously a Valorant <laughs> guy from back in the day. So just a little, a slight correction for you on that one. Yeah. Rocky's telling us that he got no, up early this morning to cut up his neighbor's <laughs> tulips for uh, ahead of this. Uh, come on, the, the climate is not such that there would be tulips, Rocky, so I don't believe you, but I appreciate your commitment to uh, uh, trolling your neighbors before this day of soccer. One of the most incredible uh, stories so far, I think of the entire World Cup, Bruce, is the goalkeeper for the Netherlands. He was, uh, based on what I've read and seen, like <laughs> thinking about quitting the game not so not so long ago. And now he's in goal in this game. You were a goalkeeper yourself. Of course, we'll lean on you from, for some commentary on Matt Turner as well. And that, that's an incredible decision from Louis van Gaal. It is. I, I understand this is his fourth international match. Yeah, I mean, it's And it's at incredible. the same time, you know, Matt Turner is not a, a real experienced goalkeeper at this level. I remember having... Uh, in the World Cups, Friedel and Keller, and those are guys that probably played, uh, you know, 50 to 100 matches for the U.S. And this is a big game. You know, one mistake makes makes a difference. But I think the U.S. certainly has the edge here in the goalkeeping. We've got the players walking out right now in Qatar. A massive moment, a massive day for both countries, honestly. But of course, we're coming at this from the mostly American perspective. Into the knockout rounds, uh, we're there in 2014. I was there in Salvador as Belgium won that match. Bruce's team in 02 is the team that's gotten past this stage. Of course, I lost to Ghana in 2010. What is this opportunity for a team, for a coach, honestly, for a nation, Bruce? Like, what's at stake for this U.S. team as we hear these national anthems being played? Well, it, it's another step in, in terms of getting the kind of respect we want around the world. But having said that, you know, uh, 
I think the national team program over the last 20 years has made great progress each and every year. And we're preparing for a World Cup at home as well in 2026. So th this will give us tremendous momentum if we can get into the quarterfinals. Arlene? What would it mean, man? What's at stake? Well, I know Landon today said this is the biggest game in U.S. Men's National Team history, and we know that's not true. Bruce was a part of that game, beating Mexico in the round of 16. But this this is a group, a group that feels they're ready for the moment, and they've proved to, to everybody that they're ready for this, this stage. And so if they can win this game, it's a massive game. If they can overcome this match, there's – there's no telling how far they can't go. I mean, why not? This is this is a massive test against a, a lot of quality players. But if they can continue to just dominate that midfield, this it's a special, special team. It's a special team. This is going to be a personal question for all of you. Feel free to abstain. Has anybody had a, a pelvic contusion before? How ready is Christian going to be, no. do you think? Physically, like... As a coach, Bruce, as a coach and player, pa, and Charlie, as a, as a player, would you have any concern about his ability to physically do the things that he needs to do? Or, or if he's in the starting 11, it's because he feels good enough. Well, he, he's, he's a tough kid. When we uh, had our last qualifying game in, in uh, 2017, he was injured for the game against Trinidad. And he was adamant that he could play. And he played, and he was probably our best player on the day. He's a tough kid. Uh, a pelvic contusion means that you got a, a bruise on your pelvic. So when he scored that goal, he probably got kicked and, and he's fine. Uh, the, the other advantage they have, you have five substitutions now. So if there's an issue with, with uh, Christian, you know, th there are plenty of options and it doesn't hurt. It doesn't damage some of the options you want to have later in the game because five substitutions is a, is a luxury for a coach these days. Would have been nice to. Pa's gonna have his whole career with five. Congratulations to you on that, Pa. Bruce got that at the end of his. How will the uh, Dutch game plan for Pulisic? Because it seems like he's one of those guys that you will that you will be game planning for. Do you think he's the biggest threat, Pa, or is, is Timothy Way in that conversation as well? No, I think uh, Musa for me is also the key because he's very good at uh, driving the ball forward. Um, you have. Uh, Tyler Adams uh, will be very important in terms of covering the spaces that the Dutch players and the Dutch team will look into play and find uh, members that buy in for him to twist and turn. So I think uh, the, the, the the midfield battle for me and the back line will be the will be the keys to the game. I'm, I'm curious, Bruce. How will Zimmerman? You do you think you think? Yeah, I was, I was going to say you are center back, Bruce. Cameron Carter Vickers comes in in a knockout round game basically iran you have to win must win scenario and then does well especially building out of the back good partnership no reason to take him out but go back to walker zimmerman what do you are are you in agreement with that move would you you know i i, w I was surprised with the move i yeah. thought he was going to stay with carter vickers because i thought he was pretty solid uh in the, in the last game but again you know he's had zimmerman for all of qualifying and there's a lot of confidence in, in that player. And I guess that's the reason. And, and again, it's one of these things where uh, we're not inside the team. So we don't know exactly uh, some of the reasons why he made this decision, but let's face it. Zimmerman's played uh, two full games to this point. So he's obviously ready to play today. So the flu, can it be that maybe that they want to no, go ahead. They want to go one V one at the back, Bruce. They want, do you think that do you do you think that it might be that he want to play aggressively and allow Zimmerman, who maybe is a bigger, stronger center back, to handle uh, the pie? It's possible, but I I, I think Carter Vickers is a, a, a pretty strong center back as well. I thought yeah. he was really good in the last game. So whatever you know, that's uh, you know th that's Greg's decision to make. Yep. I, I, he couldn't go wrong either way. All right, we're getting ready for kickoff yeah. here. In Qatar, U.S. Netherlands, round of 16, winner goes on to face the winner of Australia, Argentina. Timed up. There it is. There's a the kickoff. We are off. Dutch with the ball to start. The three-man back line for Uli van Hall. Early press there from Christian Pulisic. Out for a throw-in for the U.S. All right, predictions in the chat. Let us know. The chat says that the uh, the whole thing about the flu was 
as they say, uh, cap, Charlie. They say they say the Dutch were capping on that one. Uh, we'll see. All those guys that said they had the flu are in this lineup. So Sergeant is injured. We see Todd Pedler asking about that one. He is on the bench in street clothes, so he won't be available. You would think probably Haji Wright would be the next option there. Maybe you could rotate in uh, Tim Wea, depending on the substitution pattern. Maybe even Gio Reyna as a false nine. Uh, TBD. What would you be uh, telling your team you want in the first 10 minutes, Pa and Bruce, from a coaching perspective? Well, clearly, uh, you saw the start of the game, a back pass to the Dutch goalkeeper. The, the U.S. was pressing. So they're going to be aggressive. And, uh, you know, they're all over them when, when they have possession. They're being very aggressive in the attack, sending both outside backs forward. So they're telling their team, let's start this game, be aggressive. Let's not back away from the Dutch. I don't want to see another ball played in the air to Jesus Ferreira. That, that's just – you're not asking to keep the ball. If you're, you're just playing a, a 50-50 aerial challenge for, for Ferreira and, and Van Dyke to compete for. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised early in the game that the Dutch are not pressing Ream. They're letting him have the ball, and, and he can set play. He's, he's an excellent passer. And I'm surprised that they haven't watched the first three games and understood that he was, he's a critical part of the U.S. in possession. How do you make this Dutch team uncomfortable, Pa? Well, I'm ahead of you guys, but uh, Pulisic just had a good chance. Oh, here it is. Very good save. U.S. is aggressive, both outside backs. Uh, oh, oh. Huge save, left-footed shot from Tyler Adams. Ball recycled back in, sort of slips to him on that back post. Huge save by no, um, by Nopert, who, as we detailed in the beginning, and I'm sure Fox has repeatedly, is sort of a, I mean, he is like a fairy tale story. If you think Matt Turner is a fairy tale story, there's elements of that with the Dutch goalkeeper as well. That is a huge early save, just two minutes in. That that's a, that's a gimme. I mean. And Blinn was very oh. late in pushing out. Yeah, that, that could have been. Yeah, he's onside. Through. He's onside for sure. He's onside. Blinn Tyler Adams him. with a little dink ball behind, just a blind one. Ah. I think we have an advantage down our right side. Blind is, is a player without pace. And I, I think Dest is going to give him a hard time. Oh, damn. You see the face of Christian. <laughs> he, know, he, knows, he knows that was a big opportunity. Pa, you're, you're like a statue right now, man. Just, just taking a, it all in. Is, how do you? How does this team? Uh, he is. He is. He's Norwegian. I think he's muted. Actually, I think you're muted, Pa. Or am I? Or did I? Am I not hearing that? Well, I think the U.S. has set the tone already in this game. Working uh, yes. No, I mean for me, when I look at the Dutch team. I think that uh, the U.S. on the on their right side could be dangerous because Daily Blint is not a good one v one defender, and Sajinho Des could take advantage of that. And I mean, the Dutch are just gonna be pragmatic. They're just looking for their individual uh, qualities to make the difference. But you need also to make runs behind, you know, not dropping too deep to receive the ball, Jesus, but also maybe create the overload in midfield. Who's been the best player of this tournament for you guys for the U.S. so far? Tyler Adams for me. Although Tim Ream is is up there. Yeah, I'd I'd say Tyler Adams, Ream, Pulisic, and Turner have all been good. Musa has been very good. The, Musa yeah, as well. The, the whole team's been good. Midfield especially, you know. I know McKenney's playing a, with a little bit of an injury, and he's not at a hundred percent, but he's been solid as well. You see how aggressive the U.S. is in the early going here. The Dutch are forced to defend. Ah, just ball came to, to way. I just didn't quite get it on that right foot to turn in. Good start. Good five minutes for the U.S. Big opportunity for Christian Pulisic two minutes in. Just couldn't quite find that finishing touch. And I'll tell you, you don't get many chances at this level. That could come back to haunt them. 
So I was talking about that, Bruce. Uh, what's your thought about this World Cup uh, being a, a World Cup of momentum, where you see one team dominated and then all of a sudden the momentum change and they're out of the game? Especially like uh, like with the Japan with the Japanese team that I've done it twice. What about Costa Rica's win over? Japan, yes. that was unbelievable. <laughs> Japan Absolutely well. shocking. Yeah. Well, you know, you, as we said, you know, you don't get many chances, and and when you have real mm. legitimate goal scorers that that are that, that are ferocious and taking their chances, uh, it's a great advantage for your team. And when you get the chances Christian just got, you gotta, you know, you, you gotta finish off those plays. But again, we see. I'm a little bit ahead of you guys. Uh, we see how aggressive uh, the U.S. is in the attack. This time it's Robinson dunk going down the left flank. And I think we have a corner, corner kick, kick U.S. Yes. Yep, corner Which kick U.S. This should, this should be a strength of the U.S. team. But the service by Pulisic has been so poor. If he can get the ball in, in good spots, you know, Zimmerman's great on attack. McKinney, corner. yeah. Zimmerman and McKinney are, are terrific in, in, in attacking set pieces. So hopefully a Christian can deliver a good ball. You know, they signed man, a man-to-man uh, they... man, man -to -man marking by the Dutch. And the, the U.S. in the first three games have been screening and and uh, rotating Zimmerman or, or Ream to the back post and having some success on that particular corner. The Dutch defended very well. I mean, it's been a week um, uh, uh, side of the side of the U.S. game when it came to uh, set plays. They hired a coach for it too, which I is think. disappointing. I mean, it's part of his service, but. Either. Charlie, let's take a look at this uh, opportunity for Christian Pulisic and just take us through it from your perspective as a goal scorer. You know, what what happens in this play for, for Christian, what he's trying to do? He's uh, just trying to keep it low to the back post. And and he, he you could tell he didn't get all of it because it, it took that bounce. So he didn't connect with it in, in the way that he had hoped. But it, oh, Christian in oh. behind. Cross. Cleared away by the Dutch. Oh, man, Tyler, monster, oh. absolute monster. I mean, the, the, the front five attackers for the U.S. have an advantage just with just pure physical speed. Uh, the Dutch don't have uh -huh. great pace, and uh, 1v1 battles is to their advantage. They can outrun the Dutch on almost every play. I don't think Cody Gakpo has had a touch yet. No, but they just the Dutch just got into the attack. Yeah, third. turnover. Yeah. Dutch pushing up. Uh Depay just kind of fluffed his shot there. US to be has US has to be careful. They can't get caught throwing too many numbers in the attack uh, throughout the game. They've got to pick their spots. They've got to be a little smarter about that. Because if, if if the Dutch can hurt them, they're going to hurt them on the break. They're a good counterattacking team, and they the top uh -huh. three players are, are of quality. As the U.S. continues to press, to taking the game to the Dutch. How long do you think they can do that for? Is that a 15, 15 20 minutes? Yeah, as, as I said. And then they're going to they're going to run out of gas, so they they've got to be smart. You saw at the end of the. Uh, the game with Wales and Iran and England, they, they ran out of gas. The U.S. has not been strong in the last 15, 20 minutes of games. Uh, if you just join us now, welcome. This is a I'm early here. Saturday morning watch along here. Of you, but the Dutch just scored. Oh, oh God. God. And, and it goes back. You look at Christian Pulisic's chance, and then... That's the momentum. And, and, Cut back. And, easy, and easy, like... And there's the counterattack that burnt that burnt the U.S. team. Memphis Depay wow. with the goal. Frankie he's Mayo dancing. He's prancing. It's one nothing Netherlands. Cut back from the right. I mean, that's the game of uh, that is the game of momentum, because if you look at the chance of Polish, he must score that for me. In the beginning of the game, where you get an opportunity yeah. like this, like we just was, uh, Bruce being ruthless. Yeah, exactly. Plus, your chance, chance was uh, a better one too. Yeah, that's. Add. What a, yeah. great, what a great finish, though, my God. Yeah. 
and just and just for your guys oh that's that's a cutback cross yep. cutback cross is one of the most dead so now you know the, the dutch have already shown that they can be comfortable sitting back a little bit and getting out on the break and the u.s right, is going to get caught now they're going to be throwing numbers into the attack and they have to be smart they've got to pick their spots there's still 80 minutes left in this game there's plenty of time to get back into this game this really? is the first time i think the u.s is a. Uh, is trailed in this World Cup. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah I Andrew? believe that's that is correct. Yeah, yeah that is uh, yeah. first just run the play. second goal the U.S. has allowed in the World Cup as well. Really good run to draw both center backs in deep on Turner, and then uh, Depay just sitting at the top McKinney, of the box. McKinney, McKinney, McKinney followed the run. Adams, Adams is trailing Adams the run too. Didn't run. didn't recognize that danger in that moment. Them. All right, yes. one nothing. It's a long game. It's a long game. You know, you, you get you start to get up after those first five minutes. My wife is my wife is already celebrating. Oh, so <laughs> <laughs> she's already celebrating. I'm trouble I can hear right now. <laughs> yeah, this, she's happy. So I'm I'm happy. Your wife's happy. Uh, you gotta be happy, right? A hundred percent. I mean, I mean, given the start um, with you as pushing, you you knew that with the quality players that the Dutch possess that. Being primary, they're just waiting for those half a chances, and it's not even a clear chance if you look at it compared to the Polish one. But this also this shows the quality right. that they and, have and, going and on the break. In the first Bruce ten play. minutes of the game, they were only in their attacking third twice. Yes, and, uh, they have one because, goal, and that's what they've been so far mm -hmm. uh, in this whole tournament. Right, there's been just a pragmatic team, and that's what they're gonna uh, continue to be. They're not. They're not looking to be open. They're just looking to make sure that uh, they keep their possession nice and easy, but hit always team on the breaks. Well, if they haven't lost and in eighteen is, games, they they know what they're doing. Exactly. Yeah. So and 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 with a and with a very experienced head yes. coach, you know who who's been there before, you know, and who knows what he needs to do to get his team ready because he created a us versus everybody mindset. Mm -hmm on the team especially going with the dutch uh, journalist and everybody it's been just okay we know what we want to do so they've just been keeping calm and you can see it i'm sorry charlie so how do we pick you how do we pick, how do we pick you up charlie how do we get you long time man christian Vine here opportunity ball across and up nicked away and then another counter attack by the dutch uh, the, the the dutch are very weak down their right side defensively pulisic is getting a lot of yes. freedom I mean, what would you say to the team right now, Bruce, knowing that, to your point, we've got 80 minutes to go and so far we've dominated, they've dominated the game. What would your message be? I, I would tell them to relax a little bit, drop off, catch their breath and pick their spots going forward in, in an aggressive manner. There's a lot of time left in this game. It's the fourth game in, in this competition and both teams are going to run out of gas in the second half. So there's plenty of time. I think the U.S. has... Got some good options coming into the game. So, you know, as I said, there's just a lot of time. You can't get too crazy and get opened up again because the second goal will kill you. Uh, you I'm, have to go in at halftime down a goal or even. You it, can't go to halftime down two goals. If it does go 1-0 at half and, and you know. They're in good shape, I think. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Would you make a sub with Gio Reyna or Aronson at 45? No, I think I'd I'd wait a little bit. I'd wait till the sixty minute mark. And again, who knows? We got to see the next uh, thirty minutes or so here, see how the game uh, plays out to uh, to close out the first half. But uh, you know, there, there's some options. There's definitely some options. And be, besides Reina and Aronson, you know, you also have uh, uh, Morris that can come into the game as a, as a number nine. You know, so I think they've got options. They've got three attackers they can bring in. They can bring in Aronson, Reyna, or Morris as well. So so the options are there. They just got to make sure they don't go in at halftime down two goals. Mm -hmm. when, you, uh, when you look back on that goal, on the sequence, and everything happened, I mean, right now, you know, look, take it for what it is, but people are yelling, why isn't Tyler tracking? Just from a sort of evaluation perspective, what happened on that goal? Is it is it is it on Tyler for not tracking? Is it on? Is it just a, yeah. a brilliant team goal that you can't? I think it's a about? great goal. First of all, it's a great goal. Yeah, I mean, and, it's a wonderful, wonderful move. 
the great goal, and, and the, the Dutch got quickly into the attack. They moved the ball well, and it's a great finish. I, I would have to look at that play again to see exactly where, where Tyler was to start the play. But to me, in the first 10 minutes, you, all, you already saw what the Dutch were looking to do. They were going to defend with numbers and get out in the break. You knew what the U.S. was doing. The U.S. was going to be very aggressive to start the game, and I just think they just got caught with numbers going forward. They had to be a little bit smarter. And we've already seen two or three counterattacks by the Dutch that have really been of quality. All right. The Dutch are looking just to stay compact and yeah. tight in the middle and just open up their wide areas because they know that uh, that's where they want the Americans to go through, the U.S. to go yeah, through. I'm so it's going to be a cat and mouse game. If you watched the U.S. the first couple of games and you were saying, well, if we defend with numbers and we're organized – we put them in predictable positions, you would bet on yourself not to give up many big chances. Yeah. No, yeah, but that's that's what the Dutch has been doing the whole tournament. Oh, come on, Anthony. Beside the... Jedi, just, just hit it, man. <laughs> beside, the, <laughs> beside the Ecuador game, they haven't given up many chances. All right, let's take a look at the goal. That's, Charlie, I know, you, I know you don't want to. I don't, I don't really want to watch it again either. This is coming. This is sort of the end of the uh, of the attacking move there. You see sort of Depay at the top of the 18 coming in, referee between he and Tyler. And then that's just, you know, that's just a – that's a pro's finish right there. Beautiful cutback. Opens his foot up, brings it across his body, keeps it low with pace. Oh, he smacked that ball with pace. Yeah, he hit it. He and hit as it. we're watching, the Dutch just got another counterattack. Yeah, the, uh, the, the, the game plan is clear for both teams. Now, the U.S. has got to be a little smart. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, they just got to get in down mm -hmm. a goal or even at halftime. They cannot concede a second goal. Because the Dutch will give away chance. Yes, yeah, they will. They're, and they've been prone to mistakes. They've been prone to mistakes in this tournament. And we saw it in the last game against Ecuador. And we saw it a little bit in the game against Senegal. But knowing them, they will give up. If... U.S. just got to contain it and not go down a second goal. The U.S. hasn't been a good passing team in this World Cup. And by that, I, I'm not meaning just regular passing out of run of play. You know, the final product as well. Crosses, the crosses haven't been of quality. So, you know, they got to get a little bit cleaner. And, you know, with, with uh, Van Dyke sitting in the, in the middle of the penalty area, if they don't hit quality crosses, uh, you know, they're not going to get any chances. I don't think Van Dyke's had a great start to the year with Liverpool, but I, I still think he's the best center back in the world. We've got people watching uh, with us from yeah, Scotland, with from that. England, from okay. all over the place. Saying they're rooting for the U.S. So far, U.S. susceptible on the Everybody counter. Go. Big chance for Christian Pulisic just two minutes in. I mean, that was the uh, – that was a massive, massive opportunity. That should have been a goal. I think, I think um, if – a big if, Charlie. If U.S. don't go through, that would be the moment of the tournament. That would, that would have been his Pulisic yeah. moment. Yeah. This would have been the policy moment, the breakout that people are saying, because it was a huge, huge momentum in the game. And we saw what it happened on the other hand. The Pai, who hasn't played a lot in this tournament, showed that with the quality of finishing he has, he doesn't need that much. Should, uh, should Christian <sighs> have done anything different in that moment, Charlie? I know we're just sort of ha like rehashing something that can't be changed, but, you know, that's... That, that's... <laughs> Come on, Charlie. Is there, Come is on, there something Charlie. from a technical Believe, perspective that that you would have liked to see him do a little bit? Should he have taken a it, touch? It's, it's unfortunate because it's on his left foot. I, I think okay. he, he. I think he took the right approach. I mean, you you expect to hit it when he hit it. You, you're not going to take another touch or cut it back to your right foot. It's it the the whole goal was open that back post. He just didn't put he didn't put it uh, far far enough to the to the far post. Yeah, he did a couple of things right. His positioning and his timing was right to, to, to beat the offside strap. And then give the Dutch keeper credit. His, his, his angles were great. He made himself big, and he forced Christian to have to try to beat him to the backside. So, 
you know, and you know, we we all have we all have the answers here. You know, we're sitting here and yeah, yeah, we we got it all figured out. But I tell you, hell, <laughs> getting positioned there for that finish and a great play with Absolutely. the goalkeeper. And the Dutch keeper is not small either. Yeah. You don't mind a six goalkeeper. So. He looks tall. Yeah. He think six six. I might be wrong. Six six? Six eight. Six six. Six eight? Six eight. Six, six, eight. Is, six, six eight. eight is what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I literally just looked that up. So when you were saying All right. angles, All right. when you were saying so, angles, so, Bruce, so, so, I think okay. he can cover he's, basically he's, every angle. Yeah, he's, he's got quite a wingspan. Angle. So he's it's not that easy on Christian. He's close. Enough. No. Yeah. Forget wingspan, too. Leg span. Like, how far does that dude's legs <laughs> get when he goes? Because if you the watch the Dutch it, basketball wow. team as well. Uh oh. The story on him, if you don't know about it, and obviously I think everybody in the chat or in the, in the here does, but if you're watching with us, is that or at the start of the pandemic, I think he got cut and he didn't know if he was going to play. His girlfriend was yeah. encouraging him to. Maybe look into being a police officer or finding a different profession. And um, yeah, he, he found his way in. I think he's only been in the air division for a year, maybe a year and a half now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, has he been in 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 the PSV uh, development system? Is he? Always uh, been he was through Aaronveen. He was uh, an Aaronveen. Okay. He was in Aaronveen. Aaronveen. Okay. Yeah, he was in Aaronveen, and he was like playing Bradley there. Club. Yes. Right. Yes. One of the best and Rob one Fred. of the best jerseys in the world. I think that like a striped one with the red hearts, pretty sick, pretty sick. But do you know that they have their own national anthem every time you play there, just like in America when the games are really? mm. they, they, Yeah, they have their own national That's anthem. Great. Well, the Dutch, the the Dutch coach anthem. looks pretty smart right now, uh, playing this goalkeeper in the World Cup, huh? <laughs> yes, <laughs> and and like everybody was rooting for. For the Ajax goalkeeper, everybody was like, what a wrong choice for him to bring him there. He's on experience, never been in. But this this is to your point, Bruce. One of the, and you as an experienced coach, you know them more than anybody else. Like the trust that you can put in somebody right. and they go out and they, yep. you know, and they showcase what they're capable of. Matt, now Matt Turner. Like tactical <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And right, Ajax so, already um, has three players on the field. So, you know, he didn't want to, you know, make it too lopsided. Right, they've got Blin, <laughs> they've got uh Clausen, and who else is in uh, yep. Timber, right? Yep. Timber. And it's crazy that uh Matthijs De Ligt is on the bench because Timber is also an excellent defender who's been playing very well since he came in. Very mobile, you know, can cover a lot of ground and can as well as play in midfield. I'll tell you, Christian Polisic has uh had some pretty good chances in the attack. He's gotten behind him a couple of times. You know, for me personally, you know, when I had Christian in 2017, I played him centrally. I wanted him be being close to goal and uh, having him out wide. I, I don't necessarily agree, but again, um, the coach should know better than I, but Christian's a dynamic player. I, I think when you play him as a false nine, or underneath the nine, however you want to describe it, he's really dangerous. So then who would have you taken out of the midfield and if you want to put uh, Christian in centrally? Would well, you have you know, put they're, uh, they're, Gio they're right adamant in playing a 4 3 3. So, you know, y your system has to change. Whether you play a diamond, mm -hmm. you know, however you want to do it, you could still use those three midfielders and play it in a diamond with Christian at the top of the yeah. nine. There's a lot of ways you can do it, but I. I, I personally have liked him as a central player. He scored, for me, 10 goals in 2017. And he didn't play in any friendlies. I'm, for the most part, those were all in uh, qualifying games. Is it a good thing for the U.S. that they've sort of, I mean, they had to eventually here, 20 minutes in, slowed the pace down and tried to get things a little bit more methodical because the threat was obviously the counterattack, and when you were pushing all those numbers forward you were opening yourself up i mean as we said like get to get to halftime at one nothing get one more chance right and this well, half two more yeah. chances that's fine the, game, the game's gonna slow down anyway you know you yeah. can't you can't run with your head chopped off for 90 minutes and you know the, uh, the game has slowed down uh, i i i think it's 
it's good for the Dutch, <laughs> in all honesty, because they're sitting back comfortably and hit and looking to get out on the break, which again, they're having another opportunity uh, from what I'm watching to get out. Uh, watching it, Bruce, um, with the Dutch Some doing nah, something very smartly, which I, they're like, they have classing on Adams. How would you free up uh, your midfield to be able to get on the ball? Because right now the Dutch are playing uh, man for man in mm -hmm. midfield. Well, and I'm I'm still surprised that that they're not pressuring Reem, who's who might be the best, no, yeah. who might yeah. be the best passer on on the U.S. team. But uh, you know they they're they're making sure they're getting around the three midfield players. They're doing a real good job at that. Yeah. They really like they really congest in the central, mm -hmm. and they, and you can see class in you can even see class in that he's just they just playing man for man, and to your point, waiting for the U.S. to play the ball in the congested area, and then they can yeah. go on a breakout. And for some reason, uh, the little success the U.S. has had going forward, it's been in the in the flanks with the uh, with Robinson yeah. and Dest a little bit, Matt Turner having a little bit of a problem there. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I know I'm on the same time frame as Charlie. There's, Charlie, you're going through one right now, man. <laughs> I'm way behind. Oh. Now, Charlie, I got a Gambian network. I got a, I got a Gambian <laughs> Wi-Fi, so I'm, so I'm all the way behind. You're on the 10th minute, I think. <laughs> but, uh, every game I've been on, I've been way behind everybody. <laughs> I'm at the 27th minute now. I think yeah, I'm like 26.50. So I think I, I figured I'd be about 10 I'm, or 15 seconds Levy. behind. Say I'm 10, 15 seconds. You, you probably didn't pay your cable bill. Oui. Yeah, I that. don't have I don't have cable, Bruce. I, I got I got you know we got a different streaming service up in this household. Another counterattack for the Dutch. <laughs> God, that's like the you know it's like when the bell tolls. Bruce being like, oh, counterattack, and just me praying that in 15 seconds it's not going to be Bruce telling us it's a goal. Yeah, that one hurt when he goes. Uh, yeah, just so no, you know, was just, the yeah, Netherlands that was scored. Tough. I was that like, was tough. Oh! Is, it, is it better to is it better to know or is it better not to know? You know, <laughs> yeah. that's the question you got to ask. Oh, that do one you want to know? Do you want to hear the bad news or do you want to just? It keeps your heart rate down a little bit. That I it get. does, yeah, it does <laughs> bring you into the fact that the U.S. Got <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you're not in total shock. Attacking corner for the Dutch. Yeah, good service. No, no, that's, that's it. it. That's it. Yeah, it's like somebody being like, hey, I'm going to punch you in the face in 15 seconds, all right? <laughs> Prepare yourself, like, you know, choose the area of the face that you would like to take this blow and then uh, and then get ready because you're taking it. Another another corner kick for the Dutch here. This is our fervent desire that Bruce stay silent and, and nothing happens. Van Dyke looked like he just had a, a <laughs> just an easy run to that spot, too. Yeah, I don't know how they got a corner kick. I thought the Dutch got there. Yeah, it looked, looked pretty clear that he. Both teams man mark on, on attacking corners, which is a little bit unusual in, in today's game. I tell you, the Dutch have played a smart game up until this point. Header out by <laughs> Zimmerman, so U.S. survived that corner kick for those they uh, know watching. exactly what they want to do. Do you, um, given the experience that some of these Dutch players also possess, and and with with the U.S. being one of the youngest team, do you think that experience also plays a little part in that? Also, given the head coach, yeah, I who, I, I, I think so. Twenty fourteen, I I think so. Uh, you know, and you know the the Dutch have an experienced coach. They've got you know two players that play at Barcelona, so they, they've been in really big games. Not that Christian Pulisic hasn't been. They've got three players at Ajax, uh, which is one of the you know the, the, the great club teams in the world. You know they've got they've got some really experienced veteran players. But also the upcoming for us to see, um, for me, it's been great to see the development of US uh, football as well. Being mm -hmm. here for the past nine years to see to see some of the players that are playing also in big teams. And to your point that this World Cup is a is a great setting for the 2026 mm -hmm. World Cup to get those experience with this team 
and then in four years' time, this team is going to be truly different. Yeah. Some of these players are going to mature. Some of these players are going to be even better. And I think come 2026, they would they would be a surprise team. I, I think I, I I think when when everything is said and done in this World Cup, the U.S. has to have a really good plan on how to be ready for 2026, and they don't need to qualify. So. The, you know, the issue is what kind of competition are they going to get? I think one of the, the faults of the preparation for this World Cup is we haven't played enough good teams uh, before this competition. Mm-hmm. We've played in CONCACAF, and CONCACAF has demonstrated in this World Cup to be one of the weaker confederations in the World Cup, and that's basically all we have played. So we need more games in preparation, hold a tournament with quality teams, that we've done this in the past, bring Brazil in, Argentina, some of the top European clubs, African teams, and really give us good experience because um, yeah, I really don't think we've seen enough quality teams as we've entered this World Cup. And hopefully uh, in the three, four years of preparation for 2026, we're going to have good competitions against good opponents. 32nd minute right now, Netherlands. USA zero. I don't have to spell it out for you. As it stands, the Netherlands will on to the uh, quarterfinals of this World Cup in Qatar. Christian Pulisic with a chance in the second minute was not able to beat. No and then, of course, uh, Memphis Depay with the uh, with the shot underneath uh, the diving Matt Turner. So I saw on Twitter here that was a 70 mile per hour shot. So yeah, Bruce said, uh, "Hey, he hit that thing pretty good. And, 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 yeah, decent contact. Uh, decent. Just contact. a great goal. No question about that." I finally see Musa on the ball. He hasn't touched the ball a whole lot. No, he feels like doesn't Warmer feel like he has the same level of. Uh, I mean, understandably so. We're talking about three games in about nine days that he's played. I think every right. minute of. Yes. So. Not at the same effervescent uh, qualities he was previously. Well, you know, the Dutch have played basically the same team uh, for four games as well. So the U.S., if anything, should have an advantage because they're a little bit younger. They should recover a, a little bit better than uh, the Dutch team. But having said that, uh, you know, the, the Dutch have a really smart plan in this game. I'm looking at their goalkeeper right I mean, now. Can... He is six feet, eight inches. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah. he's, <laughs> he's a big yeah. boy. Which is why Christian I mean, kept it low. To... Uh, just just didn't, didn't make, I think, the, the... – the proper contact and putting it wide enough. He, he might have been able to beat him at the near post as well. And keeper is that big. It's, it's easy to say, but just through the legs. Yeah, you should know better than anybody as a striker. My job was to keep it out of the goal. We need to have like a we need to have like the National Soccer Museum. We need to have a, an exhibit where you get an opportunity to finish the ball that Wando had in 2014. Like they got, you know, like all the guys set up in the same positions and you ball spits out a machine. They're going to have to have one with this as well with the six foot eight goalkeeper, like the silhouette. You got to, I want to see people on Twitter. Like, Come on, you got to, all of us got to run in there and, and, and give it a try. See if you can do it in the, in the crucible. It'll be a good uh, interactive exhibit. To bring people into the history of uh, of U.S. soccer. Talking to uh, Bruce, when you say allowing a rim on the ball, I think what the Dutch have done is more of okay, we will let rim on the ball, but we would like Zimmerman to finish off mm-hmm. the attack. Yeah. So they are allowing Zimmerman to be the one distributing, and we know that may not be one of his biggest strength. Yep, being on the ball. And I think that's what the Dutch are doing very well. It's like they have Kagbo being in middle and then saying, all right, whenever Rims has the ball, let's force them inside and make sure that Zimmerman be the one to be on the ball. Which is why I didn't think they'd play Zimmerman today. No, I think that 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 is helping the Dutch on that side of it because um, in today's game, we have seen that the center backs have become more of playmakers to be able to play with the ball out from the back. What have you seen from Jesus so far, Charlie? Not much. 
Yeah, Tim Tim Way has been pretty quiet so far too. You know, the, the, the advantages we've created in the in the flanks have turned out to be nothing because our, our service is poor. But I think we can have a stronger presence in the penalty area as well. Mm-hmm. Running across the face of the goalkeeper or, or, or defenders, the couple of chances we've had out wide, I don't think we've been aggressive enough to attack the 60-yard box. An example of that would have been the, uh, the goal that Christian scored against Iran. Those kind of runs are really difficult. Make defenders face their own goal. And uh, we've been too passive in our running in the penalty area. Thirty-five minutes in here. Thanks for watching along with us. So far, not the celebration that maybe we might have hoped. There was a glimmer that that might be the case early in the game. U.S. come out pressing an aggressive team, putting the Dutch under a little bit of pressure. Pulisic just foiled by a small forward-sized goalkeeper. He has NBA size and length there in uh, the Dutch goal, and then Memphis Depay does what Memphis Depay does. One nothing right now. Dutch defending comfortably. U.S. trying to find a way to break down this low block and not get hurt on the counter. Breaking down a low block and organized defense has not been the hallmark of this team, uh, really, ever. At least this particular group. So we'll see what they can do. Charlie, smile. No, not I. I need to come on, smile. I need to see. I need to see some some actions on the attacking third. Just give me, give me something. Well, well, it's a little bit difficult when you have a team that is very congested in central areas. And to Bruce's point, is can we can then the U.S. go out wide? Because sometimes when it's congested in the middle, you have to go out wide. And Daily Blint is a guy that is not good one v one. Could they test him more? And, and Polishes have been be able to get around. So now, can you try to go on more on the outside? That's the way that you're going to free up the Dutch in the middle. Because they're very comfortable. The Dutch are now playing very comfortable. They're allowing the uh, U.S. on the ball, knowing that, all right, we're not going to get broken down centrally. That's a good ball. Loose in a little pocket of space. Uh, just... I don't, I don't think the Dutch has defended well on their right side. Christian's getting the ball too comfortably at times. However, again, we have issues with our service and people running uh, in front of the goal. It has to be better. We have to be more dangerous. Van Dyke could play uh, in a lounge chair the way we're, we're serving the ball. It's too easy for him. He, he's a player of too much quality to let him just sit in the penalty area and, and, and clear balls. We've got to put him is in that something pressure. that you would? Uh, yeah. Is that something that you will stand up and give information yeah. to, or would you do that at halftime? Well, at halftime, we're going to make it clear. But I would, have, I would have thought, in preparation for this game, they talk about it. When you have a, a player of that quality, you have got to be much more active in the penalty area and have a clear plan about it and where we want to serve balls to be dangerous. With the six foot eight goalkeeper and Van Dyke. We're not going to get the at the end of a whole lot of crosses. So can we be dangerous delivering some balls on the ground in the six-yard box or cutting some balls back? But the two strengths they have right now are certain in the air with their goalkeeper and Van Dyke. So we've got to play around and I think that, And that showed with the Dutch goal, them understanding that the U.S. having Tim Ream and mm-hmm. Walker Zimmerman, you're not going to love the ball inside. Yep. But that's why you got to keep it low. And a cut back cross and Depay, that is, a, that is a quality finish. That has been the difference. And also, when we're positioned out wide, can we beat someone 1v1? We haven't been able to do that. <laughs> That's where I think in the second half, uh, uh, Reina could be a factor. They're kicking Christian a little bit when they get the chance. You'll see come up and another foul on them. They've kicked them a few times. That's been a theme of uh, the tournament. It's been a theme of his international career. Yeah. 
What does halftime look like for for Greg Bruce? Like as a coach in this final five five, you know, who knows what the way the stoppage time has been going? Maybe 10, 15 minutes. Hell, what are you thinking? What are you doing? Sort of what's going through your mind in these moments? Well, again, I'm I'm going to sound like a broken record, but again, uh, you, you got to make it clear to the U.S. team you can't concede the second goal. So when you come out at halftime, you're going to have a lot of energy. You know, you're chasing the game, but you still need to be smart. It, it can't be that in the first 15 minutes you're so aggressive that you get opened up and the Dutch get the second goal. So you've got to be smart about that. He's got to be thinking about what kind of changes can I make? Mm-hmm. You've had a very quiet 40-some-odd minutes now from hey, Wea so- and Ferreira, so you might want to make changes there. Uh, all I know is from a striker standpoint uh- – if I'm Jesus, I'm saying, hey, can I get can I get some service? Can I can you guys look for me? And it, I know he's not really making those runs in, in behind. You can see how far he's checking into midfield, looking for the ball. But there's just got to be more involvement for, uh, and more touches. See, yeah. just he, that was a yeah. that was a missed touch that went to Christian from Jesus. But I, I'm I'm making a sub now uh, at halftime. Well, we've been uh, a little bit more aggressive down our left side now. Robinson's getting into the game a little bit. Pulisic is, is having his way in terms of getting, getting on the ball. There's no quality uh, after that. But we've got to organize ourselves where uh, when we're 1v1, what are our options? Who's running where? We've still got to get people to the near post in the six-yard box. With, with Reyna and Aronson both – dynamic midfielders who can really change the game come coming in who who would you go to first well for me i would i would go with reina because i what a great great chance right there i think it was musa struck a great ball um, again i'm a little ahead of you guys but uh, it might have been... uh yeah attack down the right side uh tim way i think it was Wea, a great strike Good save by the keeper. He hit hit that with pace. Second would, strike you know, here. For me, and to, to answer your question, Charlie, I, I think we need a player that can beat somebody on the ground, and that that would be, for me, would be Reyna. Mm-hmm. And again, I can't explain why he hasn't really played to date. But we we've got to have someone. You know, you hear this expression in all sports: who can make a play? And we we badly need a player that can beat somebody in the ground, and uh, and and Reyna is one of them. I'm looking at the replay of uh, way a strike, a, a great strike on. Yeah, ball. really good, oh, really good strike. hit. Yep. It's gonna take something special from that range though to beat, beat this goalkeeper. Yep. He did. I mean, he didn't even have to fall that far to be honest to this near post there. He's and, already you know, leaning just a little bit. And Charlie Aronson's strength is his running off the ball. Yes. He's constantly going to be moving, looking to get in dangerous spots. So. I see no reason uh, why you couldn't use both of those players. Charlie, who comes out for you? Jesus Ferreira. I, I, I think just he, – he, you could tell it's, it's hard for him to get involved in, in finding the right spots. He's, he's just not in a rhythm. And, it, and it, I mean, it's clear to see that. He hasn't played a competitive game Tim, in Do you six, push Tim up weeks. top? Yeah, and you get Gio Reyna yeah. on the pitch. You, you need that. You need a player who can who can break guys down one v one. And Brent Aronson is also good, just in terms of yeah, he run, makes runs off the ball, but his defensive pressure it will be will be good uh, to to have in the match. But you're chasing the game. So Gio Dest, ah, oh, he just couldn't get a yeah, ah! a, a great effort by Dest. Uh, yeah, beautiful Dest run. Kind of, kind of, Another another dangerous attack. Man, we just losing the ball in that little spot repeatedly, like in those little half spaces. Oh, and you know, still... we'll get it. We'll get it. We'll get our chances in the second half. We just can't concede again. You see the lack of pace from Reem, though. You can't yep. can't be in a foot race with Cody Gakpo. That's what the second half is going to look like. Wow, what a beautiful run from Dust. He, he he they're letting him come inside. They're just allowing him to get on the dribble and come inside. I 
mean, part of that is you open up that entire area for the counter too when you let him do that. Figure the odds of him. Added one added minute of stoppage time, blowing my mind. What do we? What what other? What tournament have I been watching that we have one minute of stoppage time? You telling me it just one minute from that goal? I'm ahead of you guys, and I hate to tell you what happened. Uh, oh. I think the chat just told us what happened. <laughs> Again, we just saw almost an identical goal to the first. So again, uh, transition moment. No, nope. daily blend, throw oh. in, but it's the cut back to the back post. That's an absolute backbreaker, cut back man. Again. That's just that's rough. That's rough for daily blend <laughs> in this moment, right before yep. halftime. There comes a shout again. Oh God! You uh, have that's, that's what we needed. That's what we needed to avoid. We needed the going down a goal, or even we we are really going to be chasing a game now in the second half. And you know what the ah, uh, Sergio Dest, come on, Sergio Dest, you got to do better defending. You got to do better yeah. defending. You got you can't be you cannot be standing flat. Well, he, he's also probably out of gas since he's been running up and down that right flank for the last True. forty minutes or so. Ah, uh, I mean, that's the pragmatism. Yeah. And that is the quality. That is the quality of Blind. Blind hasn't run uh, 200 meters in the first half. <laughs> no, no, he hasn't. He hasn't out on the left but again, and he finally got a chance to get into the attack, and he finished off the play. Mm, there's again, a, that, there's the halftime whistle. That, do not the Netherlands. And this is a. This would be an example of. A, uh, he should do better. He this is an example better. of an inexperienced team. A lot of young players yes. that are very aggressive. They've run themselves into the ground in the first 45 minutes. And now they're down two goals. And, and Charlie, now I would agree you could possibly make two changes now at halftime. Yeah, you got, you got to chase the game. And then I would say this. I'm going to, again, sound like a broken record. You cannot go out with your head chopped off in the beginning of the second half, running mm -hmm. around out of position and concede the third goal. Because there's still a chance they can get back into this game. They get the first goal, then, then they can run this thing out over 90 minutes and have a chance to get, get into extra time. It's a cruel game. 2-0, two, two cutbacks for the Dutch. It's a great game, a great game. You see a, a, a really small game. A great game from a tactical point. Yeah, yeah. From, a, from, I, I, from a tactical point. From a, from a soccer been, standpoint, for sure. Time. From an emotional yeah. Um, no, from, from no, standpoint, from, from less so. Yeah. US standpoint, I think the Dutch are just is, said, "Hey, let what, them come at us." Yeah, let them come at us. No, but that's exactly we'll, their we'll plan. That has spots. exactly been their plan. We'll pick our spots and yes. we'll burn them on the break. And to your point, like US, US is playing an emotional game. Yeah. The Dutch is playing a smart, experienced, tactical mm -hmm. game. They're being smart about okay, what are we looking for? We're looking to go out on a counter. We're looking to make sure that when we congest the middle, they don't have nowhere to go. And what U.S. have to do, and to Bruce's point, that would have been a little bit success, is the white flanks. Can they go on the white flanks and get those services? But those services has to be just like the Dutch right. one, low and, and hard. And go back to Christian's chance, and, right? You go back to that yes. moment to change the game, and then that forces the Dutch to play completely throw out their, their tactical game plan coming into this one. So we've played you know, exactly. 315 minutes in this World Cup and have scored two goals, and now we're down to 45 minutes where we need to score two goals. It's going to be challenging. So would you then change formation? Would you then change... Um... Uh, you, I, I, you said that I, I would you, put in another striker. I'd play with two strikers. So you would go four, four, two. Well, I would, or it three, could be a variety three, of ways. Three, four, it, three. I yeah. would have a second striker in there, and I'd put Christian behind the two strikers. Because now, but again, if I knew what, what I was talking that, about, I might be coaching his team today. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> so, give me your experience and and at the World Cup stage where you've been. 
like going down in half like they did right now and to our point about that you know uh, not conceding the second goal how deadly is that for a team that is that young well, uh, emotionally, now going uh, emotionally they're they're really down and part of the job of the coach now at halftime is not so much tactics it's it, it's psychological it's a can you get these guys to pick their heads up, get back into to this game in the second half with the right mentality, the right spirit? They can't put their heads down. I imagine they are somewhat deflated right now. So you got to pick them up. You know, to get scored on right at the end of the half is a killer. So he's, he's, yes. got, he's got to get them uh, back to thinking positive that, that, that they can get back in this game. You know, they got to get the next goal. I, the I, next goal. Yeah, yeah. I, I would I would say look at the other games in this World Cup. You know, Japan being down a goal to Spain. You know, it's not two, but it's a goal down to Spain, and it's right off the second half, pop pop, they got two right away. So it, you know, they just showed yeah. a replay of Pulisic's chance. What a great what a great kick save, buddy. Let's uh, let's watch it here. We've got all the highlights. We can take a look at those ourselves uh, if you're watching with us on this watch along. Roll those uh, those highlights. Didn't hit well, hey, off his shin, you know. It's a, it's a, it's a game. All right, that's a great chance. It's a that's, great chance. That's, that's and the thing, save, too, is, again, you're not going to get many of those because Daily Blind is just sort of like lollygagging back. Like, how many times in the match is he or the Dutch going to be in that position? I think they, they were play, I mean, there are plays that make a difference in a game. You think about that. Imagine the U.S. has a lead in the third minute. Mm -hmm. They're ahead 1-0. Then what would this game look like, you know? And I've been in that position, and – Boy, what a, um, I'm looking again at, at, at the Pies goal. What a what a what a class goal! Unbelievable. And we are on these uh, highlights from so Fox Soccer, of course, not getting the full build up. That's where you really get the complete appreciation for the team move that this was. As far as I mean, it's one of I the mean, best goals the of the tournament. To be well. fair, the the goalkeeper does well also coming out of his line and making the and, and making it uh, more difficult for players. Oh, yeah. And then he has to take it one touch. But and, uh, you, 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 see, shot, you see the, the goal. Musa and and Serginho are, are marking the same player, and mm -hmm. and Serginho's on the the wrong side of the player. So then you could say, I am here, Musa, go inside and and pick that up. So if the U.S. can get a goal uh, by the seventy minute mark and be down a goal, there's a chance they can get a result out of this game. No, one thing well, we know is well, that uh, Gio Reyna but, should be fresh. So, I mean, I'm to your point. The first goal, I'm still for me as a defender, and Bruce might uh, say this also as a coach. What you do is, when 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 the centre backs are dropping low for a low cross, you always want your defensive midfielders to make sure that they pick the people that are on top of the mm -hmm. box or on the penalty spot, because I think if Adams uh, read the situation. What, what he normally does well is like s smell out these dangers. I think if Adams would have been on position, I think he could You know what I just that, realized? Uh, I, I got to go back to my rally sweatshirt. I'm, I'm in the wrong I'm, I'm in the wrong gear. <laughs> yeah, Charlie, this is the sort of, you know what? Yep. This is the sort of superstition that we need from you. Get that state's sweatshirt. That's going to that's gonna make the difference, man. I, I truly believe that. That will make the difference. Because it's an easy cross for the second goal as well, don't you think so, Bruce? Mm -hmm. Like to have that, like to allow them to to be able to cross that, and there's no follow ups there's and no a, marking. You know, center backs are just dropping into space and not looking to be a little yes. bit more active, step into players. Yeah. Because you probably say that to your like to your center backs that. Space doesn't score, man score. Right. So, so either we have to mark it or we're making sure that we tell them all that space never scored a goal. <laughs> space never scored a goal, it's always man. So, you try to tell them always, right. make sure and, they, and they look at you like uh, you're an idiot. You know, <laughs> I like that. I'm definitely gonna steal that. Space never scored a goal. No, it is. No, space no, never scored. It's never no, scored. It's always gotta be, gotta be somebody there. And yeah. I mean, the Dutch, the Dutch, the Dutch have played the. Uh, pragmatic and a yes. tactical game in the sense of this is what we want to do we are looking for transition moment we making we're looking to make the game very predictable and i'll tell you they, they've got three really classy players on the field and and, and yes. van, van dyke the young and the pie i mean can i have those three players please <laughs> so they and, know exactly and what's those going on players. in this game they've been smart they got to exactly out. 
right down the middle of this the game. Remind- if you got if you got about 250, this- 300 million, Bruce, I think you can you can probably yeah. get those guys. <laughs> yeah. What on a what on a time salary? Yeah, yes. I mean, I, yeah, I guess I'm not counting salary <laughs> into that as well. So we better up that to about five fifty if we want to. So we one thing you can be sure of, yeah. the Dutch aren't going to come out in the second half and be running all over the place and losing their shape. They're going to sit in, no. uh, keep everything nice and tight, and uh, look, look to really burn the U.S. and get the third goal. And obviously, the third goal absolutely kills this game. Not that the second hasn't, but the third one is, is the death for the U.S. team. So we have to come out and still be smart as we start this game and be a little bit patient and try to get back in this game with a goal. And I think the key will be isolating Blind. I'll, I'll like, yeah, isolating daily Blind. Yeah, and- get get away on the ball 1v1. Get people in the box. Low crosses. And Pulisic is, uh, has found some space down the left side as well. But I, yeah. I, I think that's All right, where I'm back. You, you bring in, you bring in Raina who can take on players. New half. It's a new half, baby. Let's go. All right, let's, let's come on, Charlie. Get your mind so, right. You've been down okay, in the dumps, I'll, dude. I'll, I, all right, I, I hate I'm, to I'm see back you up. Here we go. I hate Positivity. To see you that way, okay? Optimism. Here we go, boys. Come on. Do you? Uh, because because I. Pa, how do you come into this locker room? Bruce talked about how it's an emotional management moment. What would you do if you if you walked into that locker room as Greg Berhalter? What kind of vibe would we try to put off? What would you be saying? Body language, all that stuff matters, right? I mean, uh, positive mindset is what it is because we've seen in the game of football that a lead, especially a two-zero lead, is the worst lead in football. And when you go into the game and knowing that, listen, we created the first chance, right? They've taken their chances. Now, okay, how do we? play in these next 45 minutes. And we do that by being smart, by being calculated and composed. We don't need to go gong show the first 10, 15 minutes. And can we isolate the wingers? Can we isolate our wingers? Can we get more runners in the box? That is, I just hope you're not saying that you'd, you'd rather be the team down 2-0 than the team ahead. No. <laughs> I'll take the 2-0, <laughs> believe me. Same. <laughs> no, no, no. What I'm saying is, you know, you know yeah. that you everybody know that we want to go, but in this, but in this scenario and in this type is, and we've seen the World Cup that if you get if you get your momentum going, it can result mm-hmm. to something different. We saw it in the Ghana against South yeah, Korea. We've seen it in a number of games. Was, You're right. We've seen it in the numerous games. Uh, we saw it yesterday as well. So it's just about being calm, being composed. And recognizing, okay, what are the Dutch doing? The Dutch is contesting the middle. They don't want you going through the middle. So can we then go maybe out wide to be able to come back in the middle? Yep, clearly, yep. Uh, right now on the field, they just showed on Fox an image of Gio Reyna with a coach uh, with a tablet in his hand showing him something. Yep. That'd be a sign that maybe you might see him to start this second half. What, what do you, you think, think he's showing him on that tablet? Uh, cartoons? Or- I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he's like, look, if you see the Roadrunner right here, he never lets the coyote get close, okay? He, and then if you see an anvil, you want to avoid no. that shadow, all right? No, don't, he's, don't showing him his, he's showing him his responsibilities on uh, set, set pieces. pieces yep. yep. Set place. Yep. I mean, also, Bruce mentioned a great point, which I think you could you – could, uh, they could do better is having those players that are very good 1v1s because sometimes to unlock the game yep. you need your quality players on they the, gotta beat they, they gotta beat angry. some players on the ground where they can beat yep. players on because right now it's too comfortable for the dutch back mm-hmm. it's like me playing right now yeah. i could easily play in this game easy just sitting back like van dyke yeah, is van doing Dijk's because sitting, van Dijk in, has his, not sitting been. in his lounge chair smoking a cigarette yes he's, a, he's, he's not been tested mm-hmm. and and that come because of mm-hmm that individual uh, quality of 1v1s, yeah. you know, putting them on And the move team. him a little If you bit. put a team under pressure. Move him a little Yes, bit. you got to move him I think, we, I think we need to play two nines at some point as well. well. And if you do that, exactly to that point is now that means that the other two center backs, they have to get more, a little more, more insight because they cannot allow the spaces to be the wide open. And that means that their wing backs now are isolated 1v1s because then... Either Sergio Desk can come up, or you have uh, Robinson coming in. I would, if in my humble opinion, if I was in this situation, 
I would push um, uh, way inside, and I would play maybe with two false nines, mm -hmm. which is Pulisic and Gio Reyna. And then ask the questions of the two center backs because the Dutch Timber and Ake have been aggressively playing, stepping forward. Will they be that aggressive stepping forward with the two nines or one nine and the two false nines right. underneath? Or two nines. Yeah, I mean, however, I yeah. think you just got to put a little bit more pressure uh, on their center backs. You got to get better, better service in the flanks. We've gotten players in the flanks. We just got to get the service in there. We've got to get some more aggressive running in the in the penalty area. And it may it may not be a pretty goal. It might just be a knockdown that we're running players and we're serving balls and we jump on a, yes. on a knockdown and, and finish off the play. We've just got to be more aggressive in the penalty area. See, the Dutch are making a, a change as well. They're bringing in uh, the number two. They might be going to a back four. Reyna on for Jesus Ferreira. Gio Reyna is in at halftime for the U.S. Klaassen off. Coop Miner's on and... Uh, yeah, they're I don't know if they're going to stick with this 4 3, three. I, don't, I don't see way. Of, I know, Charlie, you said you'd like to see way of playing as a nine. I don't see him as a nine. But yeah. Maybe that's their, their choice. No, he's but could you then play him as a nine? I think, think Rain is playing as a nine. False. Yeah. Could you play could you play, play way as a nine for him to stretch the back line? Because he got speed. Yeah. He makes runs behind. Yeah, they've got Rain. And, playing, and Rain is playing as a nine. And we're off. Uh, second half, U.S. Right. down two nothing. It's the it's the most dangerous scoreline in soccer that you don't want to be on the end of, as Bruce said. Give it to me. I'm gonna take it every game. The Much rather be up two nothing. <laughs> two dos Acero, a decent scoreline in American soccer history. We'll see if they can reverse one here on the Dutch. Uh, Memphis by with the first after Christian Pulisic has a golden chance in the second minute saved. Oh. Late on Daily Blade, <laughs> U.S. in the Dutch attacking third. Charlie's got his lucky sweatshirt on. A couple other people in the chat, Charlie, said they wouldn't change their clothes. They went back to the you – know, <laughs> don't got to do laundry when it's, got, when it's got good vibes in it. So, oh, The Dutch is definite. The Dutch is definitely going to go for the count in second yep, half. We cannot that, – that, that was the reason for that substitution. You're, you're bringing on a player in Steven Bergeron who, who – is that counter player that they're just gonna go they're just gonna go for the counter now because where, they know where is he playing he was he was he's at ajax, <coughs> he's he's at ajax but he was at, no, he was at Tottenham. He playing he, he's playing as the nine and they brought cody gakpo nine. in as a as the 10 on the knees and who they take Klassen. Klassen. and then they, they, they took a class yeah, they, they, they put yeah. on uh the guy from atalanta what Kurt Mines. Kurt Mines. Coop Miner? Didn't he? No. Steven Ber Corp minus. Bergwijn is the one who came in. No, Bergwijn? Yeah, but they made yeah. two changes. Bergwijn came in. They made, no, they made, they two, made two changes. changes? Yeah. 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 And Darun came out. Darun came out and... Uh, and and Klaassen? And uh, Klaassen. And Klaassen came out. And then you have uh, Corp minus and uh, Bergwijn. Yeah. So I think it's just to give more stability and, in the midfield. And they, and they bring in a number six? Yeah, they brought in uh, Cobb Miners, yeah. who's playing in Atalanta, yeah. who's a more defensive mind player. And now, and now, what is just going to be is let's allow our front three, Kagbo, Bergwijn, and Depay, mm -hmm. just to run right now. Transition game, yep. basically. They're not worried about possession. So all those people that think possession means a lot, they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna defend and 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 take their next chance. And that has been the talking point in Holland because given that Holland is a country that is known for possession mm -hmm. game, all the talks is like they haven't terminated. And then to his answer, Van Gaal has been, have we won or have we lost with possession? Exactly. And they're, 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 they're dangerous going forward. Oh, yeah. Counterattacking opportunity for the Dutch. Oh. oh, just a little bit of a little bit of a misconnection there. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of that, Here those defensive Transition. moments for the U.S. Uh, McKinney couldn't quite get out. Corner, corner, corner kick for the U.S. coming up. But that's what you need right there is Weston. This is able, where the U.S. Which minute are you in? Able to advance the ball a little bit. We have not 
gotten anything off corner kicks. It goes without yeah, saying. Need, or need or some decent service. But set plays can play a big role right now, and mm -hmm. you, and we've seen in past years how much it does play a role. Ooh la la. <laughs> So which minute are you guys in? Because my African, because my Gambian. Uh, yes! Uh, come on, we're gonna come get on! it. Come, come on! Come on! We, we should. Let's we go. Should've, we should have finished that opportunity. Oh, we did it! No, oh, Bruce, you're killing us. Oh, uh, how did he know? Oh no! <laughs> Charlie, Charlie, I'm sorry. Oh, Charlie, I'm sorry. Oh, no. Um, no. And Bruce says it's so casual. Bruce says it's so Bruce casual. Is, it's unbelievable. He's got, us on a, he's got us on a string here. He's just You guys aren't me. healthy enough for me to, uh, you know, let you see oh, this. Oh, God, I was... Oh, uh, Tim, <laughs> ball headed down by McKinney. Tim Ream finds his way playing. onto it uh, inside the six. He just can't quite get the touch. Little deflection cleared out. Next, Huge opportunity for the U.S. Oh, it's a best chance to get a goal, I think, at this point. My emotions are, are torn or destroyed. So U.S. has got two draws and 14 Set losses plays, at, when trailing at halftime at a World Cup. The two draws are what? Does anybody remember what those two draws oh, would be? Oh, boy. Uh, I got to tell you guys, I'm way ahead of you. Dutch just had a good, good chance. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're not helping Charlie. No, no. I don't know if it's helpful. Or think, big save. You got to check your internet, Bill. <laughs> big, big save. Turner, I think the that was would have been an own goal, probably. So. Uh, on YouTube, Charlie, they're saying that, that your sweatshirt is not going to get it done. I, I honestly <laughs> thought we scored, and I was like, I told you. I was about to say, I told you so. <laughs> disgusting. Well, when we oh. score, I'll let you guys know, all right? Okay. All right. Or, or no, or just stay really quiet. That's no, really actually, quiet. Let, okay. let me know. <laughs> I would love to see. You guys are I missing a good game, by the way. I tell you, it's a pretty good game. <laughs> We're watching it. We're just. I would love to see a celebration when they score, Bruce. Yeah. I mean, getting Weston in these positions to sort of drive at the back line. That. I'm going to give you a little hint. That's just uh, conceded a uh, throwing, and you'll see how he did it. Oh boy. That that that's what we. Uh... That's a hook on the golf course. That's I get technically a slice because he hit it with his left. So it's yep. a big slice, big wipey slice from Serginho. Can see to the throwing. That's hard to do, by the way. I know Charlie used to do that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. You know, th this looks to me a, a lot like the first three games the U.S. has played. You know, they, uh, they have a lot of the ball. They get into the final third, but they can't create anything. Such in your test. Father and son moment. Come on, Christian. No, nah, just a Which minute are you guys? Shot. 51 uh, 57 for me, yeah. Pop. I'm at 52 15. See, the uh, Christian's been the best attacking player. He just hasn't, uh, you know, finished off these plays. Heck of a play by Musa. Whew. For you as a coach, Bruce, uh, given that Gio hasn't played a lot, Ferreira hasn't played um, uh, a lot, going into this game, is it something that you calculate with the players that haven't played a lot? Is that the right moment to play them? Or do we Weston, know? Oh, yes! We know Bruce didn't, Bruce didn't <laughs> react, so we knew we didn't have anything. You know they're fresh, and uh, you've seen them in training. And mm -hmm. I, 
again, I don't know why Reyna hasn't been on the field more. But having said that, you know, the, uh, you know, Pulisic and Wea have been good in the tournament. Uh, I thought Sargent had a very good game against Iran. So who knows? But, you know, at this point, it's a gamble. You're bringing in players that haven't played in the World Cup. You don't know what you're going to get. Mm. They need someone to make a play in the attacking yeah. field. Thousand percent. Beat, just... beat someone on the ground. Make a good run in, in the six-yard box. But you already see the game is a lot more open than it was the start of the first half. Yeah, you know, ha- Holland's already had a couple of chances. And so has the U.S. That Tim Ream. I think the game being open. I think the game being more open will can benefit the U.S. Yeah, well, it can benefit yeah. more than it will benefit the Dutch because the Dutch. Yeah, the Dutch have the luxury have of that. having a two goal cushion. Exactly, yeah. and when the games open up, I don't think they're that dynamic enough to able to deal with it, while U.S. have with the dynamic right. players that they possess. I'd throw Jordan Morris up with the with with the Reina, or 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 stick Pulis- Pulisic up with him. Yeah, he bring the dynamic pace and runs behind. Yep. What would you do, Charlie? Being a striker, I'd, I'd put on someone like jo- Jordan Morris. I just don't feel that Jordan Morris has been has shown me anything over the past two months. I mean. Well, he's the, he's the only option left. They don't have Sergeant. Uh, they have Haji Wright as well. He could be the other option. Coming at the 60 mark, would you go to a back three? Would you take off one of the. I don't know. I'd, I'd go. I, I don't know if I'd go three? that soon. Yeah, I mean, I the, the way we're playing, the, the our back four, we are, both of our wing, wing backs are high up the field. So I don't think uh, I don't think we gain anything if we br- we brought in a. We'd have to bring in another center back. That would make no sense. No, I mean you you do have uh, Robinson. Maybe you go with Robinson in the back. Rim. Yeah. Playing as a center back. Uh-huh. Three. I, I think he he's he's been helpful go, going forward. Yeah. That's true. What have you seen so far for uh, how they're using Reyna or attempting to use Reyna in the first 10 minutes? Well, you know, we, we have not been a good team playing forward quickly, and especially centrally. So if you look at the, the first three games of the World Cup, our number nines haven't touched the ball. We don't, we don't play direct, which, you know, you can argue that till you're blue in the face. Uh, if we, you know, we, we just don't – our nines don't touch the ball. And playing direct in this particular game against Van Dyke may not get you anywhere anyway. But, again, our flank play has been somewhat effective. You know, Pulisic has had some, some decent chances coming in from the left side. Way has started the half where he's gotten a couple balls out wide. Can we put in another striker? And try to be a little bit more dangerous running in, running in the penalty area. My daughter is my daughter just walked into my room celebrating, telling me that the Dutch is up. Wow! The whole when you got the fa- the family's trolling Charlie here. Pa's family's coming through to troll him. <laughs> trolling Uncle Charlie. Sorry. <laughs> Yours is still in the game, Charlie. You need one yeah, goal, one. Charlie. Just you one. need one. Yeah. Just one. Get, here's, a, need one. here's a quote from Marco Van Basten on, uh, on Dutch television at halftime. <laughs> Two great goals. The rest is something to cry about. As a football lover, I ask myself, what am I looking at? Zero initiative. Well, again, like we said, the Dutch is just... Van Gaal is there to be pragmatic. And Van Gaal is not looking to please anybody but his players. I think he's also... He's giving them a good plan. Yeah, he's playing to his strengths. He knows his team. Exactly. Yeah, the, Dutch, is, is the Dutch aren't winning the World Cup. 
He knows. Yeah, but also they haven't they haven't had they haven't had the players that let's say to play the type of right, football exactly. that they want to play this part. So yes, they, they, they don't have playing it. total football. <laughs> They, they, they don't have it. And also, if you look at Depay, it's not like Depay is playing week in, week out. So He's at the bench in Barcelona. So if this result so, holds up for the Dutch, they've gone 19 games without losing. Mm -hmm. On a team, exactly. you look at their team, you know, they have, they have very good players down the, down the middle of the field, but they don't have a great team. Is this a they're, good set piece, Bruce? They're not Probably. winning the World Cup. I'll make that prediction. Is this a good set piece, Bruce? Yeah, but uh, we have no one since. <laughs> <laughs> no one. Uh, yeah, but is... we just need some players that, that can get it. The end. Oh, Charlie. To the back post, Van Dyke, who else? Wins the header. Serginio Dest 1v1. What can he do? Nothing. Passes it out. Crossing I think um, then, uh, I'm ahead. Of, I'm ahead of you guys. Pulisic, Pulisic just got chopped down again. Here's a set piece. We we can get a goal off a set piece. Oh boy, oh, he did get chopped. He down. got rocked. It, it wasn't that bad a foul, but it's a foul. It's a yellow card. Yeah, I'll take it, a red card. I'll take yeah, two this, two yellows. Yeah, this is where we can get a goal. Get the right service. Yeah, Good in swinging position for a right footer. Looks like it's going to be Christian on the service again. McKenny, Zimmerman, and Ream are very dangerous on these set pieces. We just got to get the ball in a good spot. Oof. And we don't. Ugh. They're not allowing any momentum in this game. They're making sure that he doesn't get to turn and finish. And we're right. seeing a counterattack again. Just not good, man. That's just not good service. No. Nope. The Dutch fly on these counters. I mean that 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 is that is the team identity. And if you watch the 2014 World Cup, it was the same. The Dutch were pragmatic. And they were looking to it on the counter. Mm -hmm. And at that time, they had Arian Robin. They had the uh, oh my god, uh, oh. Percy. God. I mean, you just even see in some of these like half chances the difference in sort of experience, the technique, quality. quality. Yeah, I mean, Pai's the chance there, and, and he gets just a, he gets a half a look. He he's at least testing the goalkeeper. He may not have Oof. been in, but he's. Oof. And now I'm seeing it. Sorry, guys. I know I don't got to worry about you, Pa. You, you can't spoil anything for us. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, God. You better change your shirt again, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> you got anything else? What else might work for Boston you? Boston Celtics shirt or a, a Patriots shirt? God, I don't know if that I don't know if the Patriots ones work anymore. I'll put the, put the one with the wear the Brady jersey. <laughs> yeah. Twenty-eight to three. <sighs> Got a little bit of a twenty-eight to three situation right here, don't we? Yeah, we do. We certainly do. Oh, what a ball. Jeez. Tell you what, the uh, U.S. got maybe a little lucky there. That could have been a penalty. I'm a little ahead of you again, but. Ball slipped in behind. Gakpo on it. Oh, Anthony Robinson. There's the collision. Gakpo's got his hand up. He wants it. Uh, yeah, Christina, we can bring her on with us right now. It's been both fortunate and, un and unfortunate <laughs> for us, Christina, that we haven't needed to chat with you. Uh, what do you, what's the process here? Talk us through what you saw in that play as we watched the U.S. attack. I mean, no stoppage of play so far, but what's going on in the referee's booth right now? Yeah, I'll definitely tell you what's going on with the VAR right now. So you see that incident. You hit the button. You say, you know, checking for potential foul. Your assistant VAR actually keeps her eyes on the game to ensure nothing else happens while the VAR is actively looking to see if there was a potential penalty in that incident. So 
while play is still live. The VAR is checking, communicates that to the referee uh, as soon as it's not a crazy moment to tell him, hey, I'm checking on this to see if it's a potential penalty or not. Um, based upon the body language by the official, I never saw him go to his ear or anything of that sort. So if they did have a VR recommendation right now would be what we would call a neutral period that you could stop the game for that formal recommendation for the fact that that's not being done right now. I think it's a check complete from the VAR room. So there won't be any penalty given on this one. Okay. Thank you. All right. That's good news. I'll take that Christina. Good news. Yeah. Let's, uh, (laughs) let's, let's get a Let's get a penalty that you uh, agree with. It's a good one for the U.S at some point uh, i saw a stat here from peter hurt over at stats perform the last time the u.s overcame a two goal deficit to win a match was the netherlands in 2015 in that friendly that they won 4-3 with a late goal right, by Brent bobby Aronson. wood haji and uh brendan aronson coming on for the u.s right now two more changes and and robinson's down on the ground he's going to need to be changed got a little bit of an injury Holding his right hip, it looks like lower back, maybe. If they they take him out, they can go to a they can go to a back three if they want. They could stick Aronson up on the left side. He can he can run all day. Geez, that could have been a penalty. Christine, did you see the replay there? What do you think? Let's bring Christina back as we see this uh, this slow motion replay here, just to get a Dumfries. It wasn't Gakpo, it was Dumfries. Yeah. What do you think for you? Is that is there a penalty possibly there for you, Christina? I mean, you said before this game, it's got to be like no duh, obvious. Everybody would agree. It's got to be, and I, I can understand why people are frustrated, right? Because we've had penalties in this World Cup with less contact than that. So that's I can that's understand that's why. Me, it's a penalty. Yeah, <laughs> and then like when we take a look at here in this play itself for this game, and like I said, it, it's kind of hard to tell people that we take this outside of what's the goal, but like looking Ooh. at it from a VAR because there is that contact Ooh. on the ball. So um, being able to take a look at it myself from this. Oh no, that's just another man. Why don't they ever show the good replays? Um, but you know, this would be ultimately what we would call consider not yet, even though I know the standards, not clear and obvious error in this FIFA tournament with these officials, it's just not going to be enough for us to recommend down, um, to alter Ooh. the game. But he, wow. right. but but he takes it down there. though. It's, it's not, it's not, it's but not hundred percent. Not, <laughs> it's just not going to rise to the level. So what is the difference of with this penalty and the one with Messi? Yeah. And so the biggest one with Messi that a lot of people didn't understand, and we're talking about the one with the aerial challenge, right? With the goalkeeper coming in on him. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Is right. We call it residual contact, right? When someone plays the ball, then there's contact after the fact. So anytime there's contact after the fact, could it be potential foul? The answer is yes. Now where we draw that balance is what, what body part did that foul potential foul occur on it? With Messi, it happened with his neck up, right, which is a lot more of a sensitive space. Goalkeepers can come in. I know the guy didn't punch him, but he ended up slapping, completely missed the ball. Ball's gone. Hits Messi straight into the face, right? And because you don't have, as a player, more opportunity to protect your face, you can't play with your hands, it's a higher level of a chance of a foul if it's an upper body because of the sensitivity and the inability to protect yourself. And that's why the Messi one leans more towards a foul than anything that's a lower body contact after you play the ball. What about the Ronaldo penalty? Uh, which one early on yeah. <laughs> in the tournament? I didn't like that, one. I didn't like that one personally. I didn't like that one. And that's, that's what Ghana. I meant. Like you take wow. that clip and you compare it to this one and you sit there and you say, I'm confused. And, you know, the Ronaldo one was supported internally by FIFA. Um, but personally, I didn't like it. Why? That is absolutely ridiculous. All right. Haji right in. As well as Brendan Aronson. Thank you, Christina. We appreciate all of your expertise and insight uh, walking us through these things during this tournament. It's been amazing to have you. Uh, we'll see if we need to check back in on a referee decision. But Aronson and Haji right in. Wea and McKinney out, Charlie. What do you think about these subs? Uh, I think they're both tired players. And and fatigue has, has set in. Uh, Weston McKinney looked like he he had heavy legs today. Um, for the most part. And he's playing with a little bit of an injury. He's not right. 100%, which no one is anyway, but he's a little banged up. This game is uh, uh, very comfortable for the Dutch right now. Unfortunately, guys, I think it will be 
closer to a Dutch goal than a U.S. goal. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. Yep. Because what is going to happen is they're going to keep pushing, and then it's that one little bit of quality, and then. So right now, Wright's up high. Uh, uh, you know, they're sticking with their four-three-three with, with uh, Pulisic on the left and Reina now on the right. Aronson uh, simply takes plays the role of McKenney. So they're staying with their formation. Is it now you would have taken the gamble, Bruce? I'd, I'd put in a, I'd put in a second wait. striker. However you want to you put in second striker now. formation. I'd, so, and I'd be a little bit more direct, to be honest with you. That was my second question. Would you look to play the balls and then fight for the second balls yep. and then go out wide yep. again? Cross put their back line under try pressure, to... maybe play a couple balls behind them and press them. But you got to be more direct, more aggressive getting forward. It can't be every ball to to uh, to, uh, to to Christian's feet and let him get chopped. But this may not be one of the most fantasyful Dutch team, but the quality that they still possess cannot be underrated. Yeah, technically, because technically you, they, good. They are, technically, they're very good. Technically, very good. And also tactically, yeah, very good. Exactly. They are playing a very tactical tactical game. They're not looking... And not a team with great pace by any means, but no, just a smart team. Technically fast. Tactically mm -hmm. fast. They know what they're doing. Here's a set piece for the mm. Dutch. He's, he's and 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 this is one of the biggest strengths that Van Gaal have. He knows how to set his yeah, teams no tactically and has a game plan to play within it, where he will allow freedom. But everybody on the pitch exactly know what their roles are and their responsibility. And it's not a fluke that he's taken right. maybe two of the most not uh, technical team of Dutch team, and he's progressing them. Right, you know, game, and this is a Dutch team. You know, games at the World Cup level are, are played at the highest pace. The the, the speed's incredible, mm -hmm. and you need players that can can, can play at the, these levels. And uh, I always tell my players this: another great chance. Oh my God, Turner! I'm ahead of you guys. Turner just made two great saves. Gakpo in for the ne Netherlands. Stopped there uh, by Zimmerman, but whoa, deflected. Wow, that second save. Unbelievable. <laughs> that that, that would have been the killer. U.S. is still in the game. Double save, Matt Turner. The first one on a deflective shot to his, to his right. He goes down low, gets up quickly. The rebound to the head of the Dutch player, and he just sticks that big paw out and finds a way to keep it out of the oh, back of the net. You know, that looked off sides. Yep. yep. Turner, Turner's been good. You know, the, the, the two goals, uh, they, they were difficult for him. Made a couple of great saves there. Ooh. You know, so we talk about speed of play or speed in the game, and, and uh, I tell my players this all the time, and they look at me like I'm a complete dope. But the, the speed is uh, pure physical speed, how fast you run. From point A to B, it's technical speed and it's uh, it's mental speed. And the Dutch may may not win this game on pure physical speed, but technically and tactically, they're way ahead of the U.S. team. If if you if you had a track meet uh, today, the U.S. would win. But you're playing a soccer game, and the Dutch are winning, and they just they're really just a smarter team on the on the day. I mean that has. That is, that is one of the biggest quality that they possess. And for myself, when I was in Holland, this was the greatest things I learned. It's about the Dutch people understand how to play the spaces, mm -hmm. how to put a tactical game plan and make sure that they analyze everything. They have truly, and, and that is also one of the great strengths of Van Gaal. He, will, he has analyzed every game that the U.S. has played to T. And we saw it today, and that has been also a common theme for me yeah. watching the U.S. a little bit of Canada. It's like they start always well, but right. then they will die and out. And the reason they dropped off is they knew that the U.S. would come out with a lot of energy. They didn't want to open the mm -hmm. game up and get caught on a lot of foot races. Nope. And they, uh, they played a smart game.
Yeah. And now that the game has slowed right. down, uh, the technical qualities of the Dutch are superior. You, you show Yeah. Yeah. Ran a cutting inside. Well, left footed. And this is going to serve the U as well, by the way. These players, <clears throat> all these players are going to get a great lesson yeah. from it. And I think, and I think they can build they can build upon right. this game. And, I, and, because... I, and over the next four years, if we, we jump ahead in preparation for the next World Cup, the U.S. has to play better teams. So they, they get a taste of this and they understand what kind of team they have against the top teams in the world. Mm -hmm. Does that also imply MLS getting better also, Bruce, in yeah. terms of the tactical yeah. side of the game? I'm, and as well and as I'm not sure M of the game. MLS isn't necessarily a... a an American league anymore. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. well, there's a goal. Here's a goal for the U S. Oh, do don't, don't do this to us, Bruce. We didn't get it. Ah! Ah! <laughs> a, a, a giveaway by the Dutch on a back. Oh, terrible giveaway. These are the, Oh, oh, Haji. My. What? oh he was, it was on frame at least. I think it was on target, but the, the touch was, the he, touch took a, was... he took a pass. Like a, you like had Charlie there. Shot. God. You had Charlie there, Bruce. You had Charlie there. That was Charlie, huh? Yeah, Charlie was ready. They were both ready to go. <laughs> he, he, he didn't need to push that ball away from goal, right, Charlie? He, he had plenty of time just to cut it back inside and, and, and finish on an open goal. Best is now out of the game. That's the coming up. Lord. Ooh. You see, he took, he took that. The first touch would be heavy touch. Heavy. Well, and this was I mean, you look at you look at roster decisions. I mean, these Haji was one of the like stretches. It felt like, and these are the one moments. Touch finish. U.S. As a striker, you taking guys, a one touch finish? I hate to tell you this. T Stop no, it! Stop no. it! Bruce. No, don't do it, Bruce. Don't. I can't tell if he's trolling us. Yeah. Falling behind on the right, Christian. Who's gonna be? Haji, did that go in? Oh my God! Oh my God. In. We got a chance. <laughs> Right as, I was talking that, right as I was talking that mess on Haji, I don't think he – there's no chance in the world that he meant to do that, but I don't care. I don't we care. It's a game. Either that's the best finish oh of all time or that's the luckiest finish of all time. It hit, what it, an incredible – let's go. His, his back heel. I don't know. What a – it's a – oh, how. What a – how's that for technical quality or accidental technical quality? Well, <laughs> that's is that, an accident. That, an old that is a beautiful accident. No, no, it's not an old <laughs> goal. That's off the back of right. Yeah, that's seat. yeah, that's he touches that. That is un, that is an unbelievable accidental finish right there. Yeah, that if is. You gave him a hundred of those chances. If he you would gave not him a million you, you of those could chances. You give him a million. That, that's not you, happening. You again. could give him a billion. There's just so zero look, chance. Look at this. Oh my look at this gosh. Game. We're, we're in this game for the last twenty minutes. It's amazing. Momentum. We, that's unbelievable. But we cannot. And it, but and the it, U.S. cannot give not up the count. For counts. the third goal, has kept us yes. alive. Oh, yeah. there's a chance. Yes. There's a chance. That has been the story of this World Cup. Momentum. Oh no, he didn't mean that. The man scoffed it. <laughs> of course, he didn't mean that. <laughs> the man no, scoffed yeah. the ball, child. Yeah, no, come on. Are you kidding me? <laughs> the, now the Dutch are out of whack completely. Yes. Yes. Come play on. Play him. Play him. It's yes. just a. Get in there, Haji! Oh, sorry, oh. Oh. oh, come on, <laughs> come on, yeah! This game might end up five to four. <laughs> the way it's going. How? Oh, I Six mean, that is. Eight, coming I still... off his line like that. Oh boy! And you're gonna look at the other end again, guys. There's another chance for the Dutch. As long as it's a, just a chance. I don't want. So he's a 3-1. Oh, okay, okay. okay, okay. Now, you're not beating Matt. You're not beating Turner. Come on now. Fail for New Jersey, okay? Come on. We got a chance. Lord. Let's go. He came sliding out there like a shortstop in position to pick up a ground ball. He's going to have to gobble that up. The Dutch are a little bit rattled now. Yep. They have to keep their composure now. Chad is saying, hey, Haji, bring on Haji was a good idea. The way a sub, flute goal, yes, completely agree. That was a flute goal, but I don't care. They all count. I don't care. They all count. 
All right, come on, let's find one. I, I wanna. I hate to tell you guys, um, the U.S. just scored again. No, how do you know? No, how do you know? <laughs> this is typical, Charlie. Don't do this, Charlie. No, I'm, I'm waiting for Bruce <laughs> to hit, hit me with a guys. Uh, your biggest to mistake the, Mike, the Dutch have made is uh, getting ahead 2-0. Worst lead in football. Yep. Wow. I'll tell you what. I think they're going to be hanging out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, come Dutch on. are preparing another change, apparently. Come on. Oh, I got, oh, I got the, to. Got the, you know, these are the moments, man. I this is why the World Cup is so I think special. Cup will, is cup will come out. Of I told you about the sweatshirt. I told you. I told you. Come on. All right, we got. Let's see. Let's see the way this sort of played out because we were on the precipice, on the knife's edge, of uh, having this game be over. Matt Turner made a huge double save here that we will watch. It's a uh, 79th minute as I'm watching for the U.S. down two one, but they could have been down three nothing right here. A little deflection yeah. down low, and then that one gets a handout. Pretty incredible stuff there. Robinson with the cross and then get a corner kick as we watch okay. this. Uh, I believe this is the U.S. No, this is this is Haji. Yeah, much. he takes it a little wide. I mean, a good recovery run there. He's like, I don't, here's you know, the, I don't. I'll, here's the U.S. with an attacking corner. Good service, huh? Eh? Keep, keep it has it. <clears throat> Come on. I don't know if it's just cold in my basement or I'm getting the chills here. Yeah, you can't play that ball to that spot. Nopert's going to eat that every time. It, it's got to be driven. Can't float that thing up. Ten minutes. You know, in a just world, given this World Cup, 15, based on stoppage time. <laughs> oh, boy. I hate to tell you guys. Oh, no. I hate to tell you. Don't, don't, don't. Don't tell us, then. Don't, don't say it. Don't, don't. It's there. Number three is there. Oh, uh, see, back post. That was oh it, my man. god, that's just come on. Are we marking? Are we he's standing back there with his that's hand? That's the up. counter. Was it a counter again, Bruce? That must be Don't freeze. That's 3 1. Boy, that that belief was short lived, oh, wasn't hurt. it? I mean, oh, he's great. just standing back on the back post with his hand up. I tell you, they've had great finishes, though. Yeah, it was hey. it was uh, very casual and easy hey. for him. Look at this finish, though. That's a he makes a it. Finish. He makes it look very easy. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah, Robin. Oh. So far inside, Robinson. There's you no, gotta leave that no man no to. That's a. That's a yeah, you gotta that's, leave him to to ream. No communication, but great delivery. That is what you has been lacking. Yep. Was the delivery of the service? The Dutch, their, ser their services was technically on point. the Dutch have been very good. The technical side of the game has been, has been, and, and that's one thing they finished. Oh. has been excellent, absolutely yeah. excellent. They're ruthless with their finish. They have been, they have been ruthless and decisive. Yep. Decisive. They've been ruthless and decisive. Great cross, great ball, great finish. There's nothing you can take. Oh, I'm gonna see man. if I can get that, that number ten from the Dutch team. To play in New England and get him on. You think I can get him on a minimum salary, Charlie? Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Reserve minimum. Just tell, just tell him he's going to play at the same place Tom Brady did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. Boy, that was, there, was a, there was a moment of uh, three great goals, though, for the yeah. Dutch. And yeah. I'll tell you what, uh, Matt Turner can't be at fault on any of them. No. I mean, they, they were just brilliant goals. For me, it's been a defensive errors. Three defensive errors, if you look at it. Don't be deflated, Charlie. Don't be deflated because it's, you get a chance again in four years, buddy. Well, if you had asked me before the game to predict the score, I never would have said three to one. 
and it's not over yet. Two thousand and five, Liverpool, AC Milan, <laughs> Champions League final. Charlie, there's still a chance. Never give up, buddy. There's still a chance. Don't play with, don't play with my heart. Nineteen nineteen ninety nine, a Champions League final, Bayern Munich and uh, and Manchester United. There you go. And it was a Norwegian tour, Charlie. It was a Norwegian tour. <laughs> it was a Norwegian tour. Forget that. It's a Norwegian tour. The referee's done a good job in this game. That makes you happy, Christina, doesn't it? I, I think yeah. there was that one that one foul could have been oh. a penalty. But I think he's done a good job. He's allowed the game to flow. He's allowed the players to play. I've enjoyed this game from a tactical point. There, there hasn't been too many fouls points. to begin with. Mm -hmm. Probably haven't been 10 fouls in this game, right? Yeah. The, the Dutch Lions. And the Dutch have had eight of them. Yeah. It says nine, nine fouls to three. A catch up to you. Nice, nice play by Van Dyke. Potentially dangerous ball behind that back line, and uh, Van Dyke read it well. It's a U.S. Uh, corner kick. Dang. What do we do at that corner? It ends up with a bicycle kick for uh, Zimmerman, of all players. I appreciate <laughs> the imagination from Walker there. Mm -hmm. I would say there's going to be six, six minutes of extra time. Why? I don't know. I haven't figured out. I'm going to go with eight. Eight? Eight. Really? There I'm going with three. Only stoppage of I mean, play. they only gave – I don't think so. They only gave one. I guess you have – you've got – But there's substitutions and goals. Ooh. Five or six minutes, I think. Anthony was down for a little bit. Anthony Robinson, maybe the fact of that. Yeah, I mean, too. you can okay. see he's got a little bit of a hitch. i got to lift that ball a little bit higher, Walker. There's a yellow card. Uh, <laughs> just <laughs> Christina's got a five minute guess on stoppage, so we'll see. Uh, this could be this could be a fun World Cup game going forward. Everybody, I don't want to encourage bad habits, but you know, everybody put a few things in the pot ahead of uh, halftime and the end of the game and see who gets the stoppage time right. I'm going to say six minutes, but I think five might be correct. Denzel Dumfries, one goal, two assists. Pretty big night for him. Good night for Louis Van Hall as well. Praises for Halter in the lead up about his tactical identity and then uh, made pretty clear that he understood that identity pretty well and how to get after it. <laughs> he catered to his players. I tell you, the, the Dutch goalkeeper has been pretty good. And it doesn't look like it, this is what his fourth or sixth right. 
game. It looks very uh, composed. The U.S. is really having a difficult time uh, delivering any balls of quality in front of the goal. And you got three towers in there. <laughs> We're 89 minutes in here. Three one Netherlands. You can see that on the screen. We're all watching. I mean, if you're here, not watching, I, I don't know what you're doing, but I appreciate you being here. <laughs> this is looking like it's going to be the end for the U.S. We'll do a little reaction afterwards. Fifteen twenty minutes with you. Try to put a. I don't think you can say put a bow on this. Uh, you can put a bow on the tournament. Maybe not this particular game, but we'll try to uh, try to draw some conclusions and look ahead because this is not the end for this group of players. Obviously. Let's just get one more. Just, just, you know, why not? Why not? Soccer is going home, says, I assume, an Englishman. Oh, extra time, six minutes. I win. Uh, I Bruce, Bruce is the winner. <laughs> uh, the pot goes to Bruce. The pot, the like pot and the pride go to Bruce. All right. The I experience shows. The experience shows. <laughs> The experience showed, yeah. just like in the game, Bruce. DeAndre Yedlin gets a, a good shot in on, uh, on Aki. I think the Youngs played a good game. Here comes He's been sifting out the problems there. He's not been the dominated one on the ball, but essentially he's been always there uh, around uh, it. One, la one last change for the U.S. Morris comes in for Robinson at the 91st minute. A little late on that one. Yep, a little late. I would have done that in all honesty, 15, 20 minutes ago. Just play with a second striker. And the Dutch are going to close the game out and bring in two fresh players. Yeah, Delict. <laughs> Better ball than before, at least from Musa. Yeah. That was our best cross of the game. Vekhorst. Well, right at the whistle, we'll get Bruce's thoughts and then uh, send him on his way. And then Charlie and Pop sort of break this one down with you guys a little bit. We'll stick around for 15, 20 minutes if you're watching with us. For U.S. Uh, supporters, not the, not the result. Uh, it goes without saying that, that we were hoping for here. 3-1. Producer Mayor says there's still time. I agree. I agree. Let's just uh, – still 3-1. You need two goals in, what, three minutes. Anything can happen, Charlie. <laughs> it 
Who would you guys say has been the, the pl player of the match for uh, for the Dutch? A lot of people will say Dumfries yeah. because of his a goal, goal and assist. A goal and two assists. Yeah. But for but for me as well, uh, Frankie has been very good in the midfield. He's been he's been very solid. Ah. Yeah. If you're looking at and Van Dyke hasn't uh, set a foot wrong, right? No, no, so with the shot, but, no. But also, he has not been challenged. Yeah, they haven't. Too yeah, what's a what's a dangerous moment that, for him that would truly? And uh, what a great goal by Depay! What a great, great goal! No, he, he, no, he took his chance. Yeah. But I mean, Dumfries to assist uh, a goal, I think, is worthy of a man of the match. And he had the third goal as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did Dumfries assist I think on the first goal or the second? The first one. First one. I think he assisted he on both, I think. One. He had the cutback on he both, I think. Both. Yeah. He, he played the cutback both yeah. times. But I guess he would be the the player of the match then. He's in Inter Milan, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, Inter Milan. Yeah, Inter Milan. And he's young, right? He's like 23, am I correct? Dumfries is 24. 24. 24. 24. I actually, sorry, 26. Yeah. He's not. I thought he was 24 oh, for some reason. He couldn't play for the U.S. then. He's too old, right? <laughs> well, this uh, we're ninety-five minutes in here. But think, uh, think in twenty twenty-six that a number of these players in the, in the white shirts for the U.S. are going to be playing, and they're going to look uh -huh. more like the Dutch players in in four years than they. Than they look now, so I uh, gotta hope that th these experiences are gonna mean something for the next World Cup. Bruce, just let us know we hit that final whistle, and we'll do the post game uh, thoughts yeah. from you and get you on your way. I know you got things to do and people to see. I gotta do the ratings. Yeah, I've been, you know, I've also just been staring that that in the eyes of that dog photo behind you the entire. Mm -hmm. Watch along. I can't believe you can see that. That's amazing. Damn. You know, as coaches in all sports, we we always talk about players making plays. And, you know, we can go back to the second or third minute in the game. What does the game look like if, if, if Pulisic finishes that chance? Mm -hmm. And on the other side of it, you, you give the, the keeper for the Dutch team a lot of credit. Nopert, what, what a great save. He's composed. All right. Yeah. Let's get your thoughts here, Bruce. There's well, the I final. Think... Hold on just one second. I'll, I'll get you started. We got to have a clean break here. All right, final whistle, Netherlands 3, USA 1. The Americans' journey in this 2022 World Cup is officially over. It ends in the round of 16, a familiar ending point for the U.S. Uh, we have Bruce Serena, Palma Duca, and Charlie Davies here. Bruce, we know we got to send you on your way. Everybody go check out the player ratings at MLSsoccer.com from Bruce. Uh, evaluate this match, this performance for the U.S., the feeling that you have after this one, and, and what it maybe means in a bigger a bigger picture, knowing that we're now looking ahead to 2026. Well, I think on the day, you, you need to give the Dutch team credit. They were the better team. Uh, didn't carry the play for 90 minutes, but played a smarter mm -hmm. game. Tactically, were very good. Technically, when their opportunities were there, they, they took them. They scored, I think, Three great, great goals with the pie and, and Blind and Dumfries. Excellent goals. Their goalkeeper was steady. The U.S. team, you could see their inexperience, got, got, lost their shape at times, got caught on counters, uh, and probably uh, ran out of gas. Uh, and having said all of that, they, they fought to the end, which is always the, uh, uh, the great characteristics of an American team. But give the Dutch credit, a more experienced team, a team that was technically and tactically better on the day. Seeing images of Christian Pulisic on the field, being embraced by his teammates, being comforted. All right, Bruce, appreciate all your time uh, in this World Cup. It is uh, it is now over for the U.S. As I said, player ratings over at MLSsoccer.com. We'll send Bruce on his way. Charlie, 
Well, we had a moment of hope, man. We had a moment of hope when Haji Wright sort of scuffed, flipped, accidentally had the finish of the tournament, you might say, to get it to 2-1. There was a feeling that something special might happen, and it just wasn't there for the U.S. on this day. It wasn't there in the second minute for Christian Pulisic. It wasn't there uh, in those defensive moments where a little bit of uh, awareness, uh, the effort to track, um, it just didn't quite didn't quite come up. The quality wasn't there for the U.S. and it was for the Dutch. What do you make of this exit? How are you feeling? I'm I'm proud of of the performance um, that they've they've had in in total at this World Cup. Uh, this is a a group that I think grew. They inspired. You know, the the match against Iran it was a must must win game. It was a basically a simulation of of what was to come in, in a knockout situation they delivered but today it came down to chances and when you could get that opportunity capitalized because we all know in an international game chances are hard to come by especially against a, a defensively sound dutch team where technique and and tactical experiences to to the highest level you get that one opportunity christian pulisic is it's the Literally, the player that you want in that situation, a breakdown because Daly Blind was late to push up. You get that magical moment early in the game, would have set the tone, would have forced the Netherlands to completely scrap what they had planned coming into this match, and the execution wasn't there. And, and that was the game, unfortunately. And, and, you know, Pa, you said it in the beginning. You're going to look back after this match and say, man, if Christian finishes there, it, it, it could have very well been, been a oh, good yeah. game. It changed, it changed the picture of the game. It changed the picture of the game. And again, that has been, for me, in this World Cup, momentum. It's a big word that I've been using with everybody I speak with. It's the momentum changes that the World Cups bring. After four minutes, if you get the Dutch behind, will they, will they change their game plan? Maybe. But missing it, it's a sitter that he should score and that we all say he should score on. But again, the keeper came out and it's a difficult chance. But if it just went maybe an inch or two inch, more to his right, it's a 1-0. Mm -hmm. But I don't think you can fault themselves because they are facing, they faced a very tactical and organized and quality team. Let's not forget, half of these Dutch players are playing in big teams in Europe. Dumfries is playing for Inter Milan. Van Dijk is playing for uh, Liverpool. Ake is playing for Man City. De Jong is playing for Barcelona. De Depay is playing for Barcelona. So there's quality in the Dutch team. It's not the Dutch teams that we used to see playing, you know, open football, attacking. This is a very pragmatic mm -hmm. team. But this is a great lesson for the U.S. to take on because in four years, they're coming back home. And my takes for the U.S. is, the question I have is, is it ideal not having to play competitive matches leading up to 2026? Which means a lot. Just not playing games, competitive games. Is it ideal? Uh, it's, it's, it's not ideal, but you, you try and get into Copa America. You try, you know, yes. you, Copa America would be fantastic for this group because now you're, you're in a real competition. 100%. You've got Brazil, Argentina, uh, Colombia, you know, top Ecuador, you have all these top all teams. These so you try and play mm -hmm. these the Nations League, you know, you have that, you got uh Copa America, yeah. but I think the friendlies in particular, you try and play the Spains, uh, all the top teams in the world. Yeah. You just constantly play them and that's what's going to really help this group is as many group uh talented friendlies that they can play and then these competitions that they can be a part of. Like that's it. Yeah. That's going to be very ideal to your point. You can't just go play the same team over and over because these games is the games where they will get their experience and this experience will benefit them. Because you look at the young group, you look at uh, Musa is going to be 24 in the next World Cup. 24. He's going to be 24. Yeah. Tyler Adams is going to be 27. Polish is going to be 20, 28, if I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. 28. So you, they're coming into their prime. But the biggest lesson is today you got outplayed on the tactical and the composite size of a team that is very pragmatic. 
in their way of going into this World Cup, who understood who they are and playing to their strength. Matt Doyle joins us here. Matt, where are you at right now, mentally, emotionally? Uh, what did you see today from the uh, I, I think I'm probably higher than any anybody else is going to be because I, I really I really liked the tactical battle. I thought the guys showed up. Uh, they just they got caught with young, tired mistakes, right? Like like Tyler not tracking and Musa not rotating over. Uh, on the first goal, like that's a young player mistake. Those that's a tired legs mistake. Same with Serginho and uh, Anthony Robinson falling asleep on the uh, the second and third goal. Like both of, that, that's what we saw against Iran, right? Like people got mad that uh, that that uh, Berhalter went to five in the back over the last twenty five minutes against Iran. Well, all the all of Iran's goals were coming or chances were coming because the fullbacks were sort of falling asleep and letting the uh letting the the wingers get inside of them and we saw it and it came home to roost and it's frustrating to see it but like everything i saw that didn't work right for the us felt fixable if it was an experienced team making those mistakes i would be really really frustrated by it but a young team going out like that um, I mean, they really went out on their shield. They took it to the Dutch in the second half. They took it to the Dutch from the whistle. If Christian finishes that great look, uh, you know, things could be very, very different in, in how this game played out. Um, but that's a game, right? It's cruel. Tyler Adams was arguably the best D-mid in the, in the tournament in the group stage. He did not put a foot wrong. He fell asleep once, and you're down 1-0. These experiences are so valuable. I am so incredibly impressed with how this team played for basically all 360 minutes. Uh, and I am wildly bullish on, on what's to come in the next four years. Like I'm jazzed by everything. Like it, this gave me the hope and the, the, the juice that like world cup qualifying never quite gave me because it was all so ragged and rough during world cup qualifying but we looked like a really good team for most of this tournament man um and it hasn't felt like that for the u.s uh since charlie was running around 13 years ago it really hasn't so you see it the first team onto the quarterfinals the netherlands 3-1 winners against the u.s another game to come today we will see some guy named leo messi taking on the plucky australians Take me back inside the tactical battle here, uh, Pa, and, and Doyle is talking about it. What did Louis Van Hall see in the U.S.? What did he do, and why were the U.S. not able to uh, to deal with that in those crucial? Well, moments? I mean, if you look at the U.S. game, has been has been uh, composed possession, you know, build up, uh, penetrate through the middle, get your best players on the ball, which is Polišić, Musa. They have had spaces where they could drive uh, McKenney on the ball in good areas. The Dutch team went in, analyzed them, and said, we are going to make sure that we congest the middle, make the game predictable to our liking, and let them have the ball. And where the U.S. were having the ball, I think U.S. could have uh, gone down the flanks more. They should have uh, isolated the daily blint with uh, Timothy Vea, knowing that he got the speed, he got the 1v1 quality. And that's the other part that he came down to. Players with individual qualities, like the 1v1s. U.S. have them, but I don't know. Sitting here, I cannot say much of uh, the reasonings behind maybe those players that could not come in or didn't play in earlier. But individual players with individual qualities can open up a game and against a rigid Dutch system and pragmatic that we were, the US needed players that could do something individual on the battles. But also to Doyle's point, on the other side, you cannot sleep on little mistakes that happen and those it was three defensive errors that became costly for the game. Yeah. Which could be rectified in the next yeah. Days. Hopefully at the, at the Olympics. I heard you guys talking about Copa America. If we could get into the Copa yeah. America, like the the, fe the USSF should move heaven, the heaven and earth to get. And same for Canada, and same for Mexico, and same for you know Costa Rica. Like it should, there should be six 
CONCACAF teams heading down to Comey Ball to play in that tournament because it's it's better for everyone. I want to add on to, to what we saw in, in terms of tactics. Like, look, I think Greg Berhalt is a really good coach. I think he pulled almost every lever in this tournament. I think he, he pulled the right one most of the time. And as Pa says, if there's a little difference in terms of uh, individual quality in the U.S., uh, both in the starters and and – you know, in the subs, this could have turned out differently. But Van Hall, like the man oriented marking <laughs> in central mid, like Van Hall is, is one of the great coaches exactly. in the history of the Thank game. You. And the man oriented marking in central midfield took the U.S. out of that rhythm and out of the, the ability to hit into pockets, which is what defined mm-hmm. those first three games. So it forced the U.S. to do two things, almost all of it through Tim Ream, either hitting those diagonals to Serginho Dest, which were often very productive, but always dangerous because they were sitting right on it. Like they wanted Des to get the ball Mm -hmm. and they tried, like they were blitzing him as as soon as he received it. That's one. And two, the other one is they just tried to play over the, they forced the U.S. to try to play over the top. And like Jesus Ferreira is a nice player. I don't think he's a center forward at the international level. And he's certainly not going to win anything in the air against Virgil van Dijk. So that becomes the Dutch win the header, win the second ball, and then they're springing pressure traps. And by pressure traps, I mean they want to hold the ball in their defensive third and knock it around and bring the U.S. upfield because at that point, you could just take off, right? You have the skill to get out in the open field, and all it takes is Tyler Adams turning the wrong way for one second or Eunice Musa, you know, not rotating over, and you get – Memphis Depay, a look from the, you know, 12 yards out for one nil. So it was, it was just brilliantly done from the Dutch who Mm -hmm. I did not think played a single minute of good soccer in the group stage. No, (laughs) they were terrible. (laughs) No, no, but that has been also the talks. And, but that's what I try to tell in 2014, same thing. Van Gaal, pragmatic football, using his best players in the right positions and making sure that they can cause damage. 2022, exactly the same. He's not going to play brilliant football, but to your point, he analyzed the Americans. And to the biggest thing that he did for me is, I think we used to it in Europe. And I think once people get to understand it here in the US, they're going to be even dangerous. When you are marked, doesn't mean that you cannot still not get on the ball. Doesn't mean that you can create space for your other teammates. And to that point, I think that's where it lacked in the US a little bit. Tyler Adams got marked by David Klassen, which they do in Holland, which is brilliant because I love it. Sometimes it's man for man, which is it's your own responsibility. So Klassen had the responsibility to follow Tyler Adams anywhere he was going. So Tyler Adams could not get into his normal game, you mm-hmm. know, which is, you know, covering ground people so now he gets a little bit frustrated because he's not getting on the ball and he's been marked out so what does he do he stand and that makes the Dutch happy so they congested it to the point that the three midfielders were basically saying Van Gaal basically said to them this is your man this is your man this is your man follow them anyway they go and once that US can possess that beating that man-to-man system creating those spaces for Polishes maybe to have gone inside centrally and to see what their centre back would have done, I think would have created another problem for the yeah. for the Dutch. But to Doyle's point, nothing happened like uh, over the top. Yeah, you have a guy playing for Liverpool and a guy playing for Man City. You're not going to beat them over yeah. the top. Yep. The the thing. Let me just jump in one more time, Weepy. The thing that that bothered me <laughs> is I thought midway through the second half around the 25th minute Tyler started dropping out of midfield and it was like the old Burhalter team remember where where Will Trapp used to drop and split the center backs and then both the fullbacks mm-hmm. would go up he started doing that and Klassen started following him and I was a little frustrated that they didn't keep repeating that pattern of play because that's mm-hmm. how you want to use Jesus Ferreira because if Tyler drops out of midfield. He drops out of the shape, changes the U.S. shape. That's where your false nine can come in. And I thought that was on. And I'm really, like, if there's one tactical frustration um, as opposed to, like, individual player frustration I take from this game, it's that we didn't see that. Because I think, like, honestly, if you if you want to attack a man-oriented midfield, you drag the number 10 up. You drag him out. So they have fewer numbers in central midfield. So there were there were solutions, but we're talking, you know, we're talking top 
15 top 16 teams in the world, right? And the Dutch have been there before. Uh, this U.S. team has not. These are the types of solutions that I think that they will figure out uh, quicker and maybe even on the fly four years from now. At least I hope so anyway. How's he right with the And goal? I think that's why, to your point, playing those games is going to be a huge advantage for the U.S. because we saw it with Qatar. It's okay to host the World Cup, but the competitive match that you need to develop those relationships in a real intense game is needed. And I hope that they can get it going into those games because it showed today that the experience is where the Dutch won. Netherlands are on, of course. Haji Wright with the goal, one of the great accidental finishes of all time. Uh, I might say he meant it. He uh, meant it. He, I mean, he he meant for the ball to go in the back of the net somehow. I'm not sure if he meant for that particular technique to come off. Uh, question marks, Doyle, at all about U.S. roster selection uh, for this tournament? Uh, evaluating yeah. Burhalter a little bit more critically than maybe because I think the tactical side of it, he did very very well, and obviously he got this team to play at a different level than we had seen leading into the tournament. But what would be some criticisms for Greg if you had them? Yeah, I. I... I think he overrated Jesus Ferreira and and um, and Haji Wright. I, I don't think either guy ended up being a net positive uh, throughout the tournament, and that's a little harsh on Haji because he did have the goal, but like he he mostly looked lost, and you know that big Greyhound bus of a touch he took on the Dumfries back pass uh, that I'm, like that one's going to be burned in, into my memory. So um, you know uh, that's I'm not going to say picking nits, um, but like that that stands out. But the other one. The one that I've been banging on for years now is I, I think he just tends to miss evaluate central midfield talent. Like Kellen Acosta is the right guy to be there as Tyler Adams backup, but he's not a number eight at the international level and neither are Christian Roldan uh, or Brendan Aarons. Those guys are wingers in this system at the international level. And that left him with Luca Della Torre as the only real number eight on the roster and either Lucas still hurt or Greg didn't trust him. And that brings it back to, okay, then why weren't you looking at Keaton parks and Eric Williamson and Paxton Pomacall? None of those guys is going to replace Musa McKenney or Adams, but all three of those guys are like for like number eights. So you can, you know, when Moose is gassed at the 60th minute, you don't have to run him into the ground into the 85th in a game that you're controlling. Right? So I, I do think that that, was a big one. Um, I think you could have maybe brought a real left back to to put in for you know Jedi because by the 55th minute tonight, man, and I feel for him because I don't think anyone in this tournament. I was going through the FIFA data. No one in this tournament has logged more high speed sprints or more mm -hmm. distance sprinting than Anthony Robinson. Asking him to do that four times in 15 days in the Middle East in the intensity of a World Cup you kind of always knew you were going to need a left footer in there. So hopefully in the next couple of years, uh, a John Tolkien develops or uh, Dewan Jones gets his chance. Uh, you know, I'd love it if Kevin Paredes was anywhere other than Wolfsburg, who I don't think developed players well. And in fact, using him as a winger and his upside as a winger is not there. Like his upside is as a left back. Um, hopefully those are answers going forward. But I think, I think Burhalter could have forced the issue with one of those guys so that, again, we, we don't see – like the, the the mistakes that we saw on the goal, especially that third goal, Pa, like that's tired legs lead to a tired mind oh. and you just completely shut off. No, 100%. And, the, and I, that's why I said it was a defensive error on all three goals where could, communication could have played a big part because you've thought uh, – You've thought that when you when and the center backs were a little bit too low for my liking, and again you you've seen this for sure, and you may have stats, and I follow it. I think nowadays most of the goals are coming off uh, cutback crosses, yeah. and 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 the Dutch has done their lessons, understanding that with a with a floated ball, Depay is not gonna he's not gonna win against a Zimmerman on the ring. So which are the areas that they know that they could hit them on? is cut back and we saw two cut back goals where it was communication was the key to it and the first one uh tyler should have followed it should have been a communicated from the from zimmerman and rim you know for for them to take the penalty spot area and the second one i think for me that uh sergino dest just slept for a second and he got punished 
and the third one exactly the same anthony robinson who's been amazing on the left back going up and down yeah. you know got caught in talking in way too way too much where for me tim rim should have taken the responsibility and go and open his body shape to see because his body shape was not even open uh robinson his body shape was not open you know to see what is happening and you get punished at this level like the quality of the players a great delivery which us didn't have yeah. right and then it showed the dutch had so it was that little quality of players and the quality in the technique that made a difference today. who was the player of the tournament for both of you let's start with you Joe. tyler and I know it's it's tough to say because you know the he's culpable for the first goal today, at least partially culpable for the first goal today. Um, but to me, what he did in those first three games, um, playing as a single pivot, which I had real questions about, given that I think he struggled with the um, possession aspects of that role in qualifying. Uh, I thought he was much better on that, and just like it, he, in terms of his defensive presence, he is borderline world class and I, and I thought you know he he showed it for 270 straight minutes and um again it's it's sad that that he's got a little egg on his face for for the first goal today um but to me that doesn't yeah. take away from from what he did out there how about you pa who would be your player of the tournament for the u.s i mean uh, by far to those point has been uh, tyler i like musa because love given him. he's the youngest player with the quality that he's shown on the ball and understanding of the game, he is going to be one to watch in the next four years for the US. He's already playing in the Spanish league. He's always playing for Valencia. He's playing in a team that is known to develop young players. And I think given where he is right now, watching him in this World Cup, because I love midfielders that are dynamic and he's shown that and he's somebody that will, is brave on the ball, you know, can he add goals and assists to his game? When he does that, I think he's a player to to definitely take this US team in the next level. But Tyler Adams was a real captain, not only on the field, but off the field. Because for me, what he said to the media against Iran, Iran was very mm -hmm. important. That is a great message to share to the world and show that it takes all of us to make change. And I think looking back at it as a coach, do I ask myself, how much emotions went into that Iran game that may have played part today? Yep. They look spent, didn't they? They look because you played a Dutch team that was already qualified. You had to go to your last game, which again showed. And all these four games, U.S. have dominated. U.S. have showed a different side of football where people's eyes have been, okay, they can play football now. And it's just the matter of execution. And I think that will be the next thing that Paul Holter will get this place to understand that at the highest level, execution is the key. That's an interesting transition there, Pa. And I'll throw this one to you, Doyle. Uh, pa said Burhalter <laughs> will be the one to potentially do that. He may yet be the one, but I believe his contract is up at the end of 2022, at the end of this cycle here. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> so what now for Greg Burhalter? I just saw Jimmy Conrad tweet that his fervent belief is that national team managers should not spend more than one World Cup cycle in their post. Are you, are you shooting this at me or is this at Pa? I'm shooting this at you. Because right. Pa's, Pa's an active well, member of the coaching <laughs> profession. I'm going to let him... I'm going to let him... No, nah, but for me, no, but for me, I have no problem answering that because I think he's done a magnificent job. So why should it only be to one circle? He's doing a great job. There's a lot of talents coming in. He's giving... This is the youngest U.S. Uh, men's national team to go to World Cup. For four games, they've showed that they belong. They've seized the moment of playing his type of game that he wants to play, which where the game is going. Now is can he add little quality to it? And to Doyle's point, maybe the finishing touch would have been somebody like a Depay, a world-class finisher, that when they nice. those areas, they finish chances, right? Because from the back to the middle, U.S. is very strong. You have you have a, you have a quality players in Pulisic, you know, in uh, Tyler Adams, in Musa, in Weston, who is not, by the way, not fit, and he's one of the best players to make those late runs in the box, which we didn't see this this World Cup. He possessed those things, but to score goals, you need a number nine. <laughs> you need a number nine where U.S. is lacking at this moment, you know. 
So when they can set it up, I think he deservedly should get another run. What do you think, Doyle? Uh, I I wouldn't be at all disappointed if he got another run, though I I get Jimmy's point of view, right? Because we had Bruce Arena for the 2002 and 2006 uh, cycles, and the U.S. did not perform in 2006. We kept Bob for 2010 and then the start of the 2014 cycle, and uh, I think we hit a low ebb under Bob a year into that, and that's where we ended up with Jurgen. Uh, got out of the group in 2014 i don't think we played good soccer but we got out of the group in 2014 but then we were a disaster in 2015 and 2016 under jurgen so we have a history of keeping coaches for two cycles and it not working out so i completely understand where jimmy's coming from uh even though i really do think that burr is a very good coach and i wouldn't mind it that said so who, I, before i get there who would you guys well i i don't know who i would pick <laughs> But what I will say is I don't I don't think Burhalter is going to come back. I think he's going to have um, options in Europe. And I think that for him and for a lot of uh, American coaches and Canadian coaches as well, um, that is I'm not going to say the holy grail, but that's a step that so few have made. I think that's where his eyes will be. Um, and at that point, I don't know who the right answer is to be the next coach. I mean, yep. I. You could make an argument for Jim Curtin, especially because of the relationship with Ernie Stewart. You could make an argument for, um, well, I don't think Louis Van Hall is going to be available, right, given his age and his, his situation. But going out and trying to find a coach like that, um, you know, with that type of pedigree, what I would expect is that it'll be a, a wide ranging global search. Um, and who the hell wouldn't want the job given the way this player pool looks and given where the 2026 World Cup is? Greg has not said it to me personally. I've interviewed him one v one a number of times over the last couple of cycles. But I think, I think you can read between the line between some of his answers when asked directly or indirectly that he would like to be in a club day to day building situation again, where he's better able to sort of implement and express uh, both himself and his players' qualities through you know through truly managing on a day to day basis. And, and you said it, Doyle. There's not many times that American coaches. North American, to be honest with you, have the door cracked like this. Mm -hmm. And given his performances, given the world stage that he's had, if it was going to be any time, it feels like this might be the time for Greg. We will see. Uh, but the obvious answer uh, to as to who it is next is uh, is an open question. Let's finish with this. What's the uh, what's the question? And we said number nines. Who's the most important player for the U.S. in four years? And you can't take the easy way out and say somebody we don't know because it's obviously that person is going to be in the mix. But of this group, who will be the most important player for the U.S. in 2026? And what's the most important thing to be done over the course of those four years? Doyle, who's that player? Musa. Because uh, I, I think he's the guy who can um, elevate both his fitness and his game on both sides of the ball and add an element of class to that midfield so that the U S isn't out there controlling the game for 45 or 50 minutes, but is controlling it for 90 minutes, even against some of the best teams in the world. I think he has like, I think he has the ability to be like a starting midfielder for the likes of an arsenal or a Tottenham or a Chelsea. I think that's where that kid's ceiling is. And if you get, I think if you get a guy like that in central midfield playing next to a defensive presence, like Tyler, then a lot of the attacking stuff takes care of itself because those guys are just getting on the ball in better spots against scramble defenses. So I think Eunice Moose is the most important player, his development, his health, uh, his two-way awareness over the next four years. And if you were to give some advice or give guidance to the, the Federation, whoever's the manager, whatever it might be, how do you get this team ready? I mean, you know, don't take your time. Move quick, make the right decisions. I think you, whether Greg is back or not, I think you keep building on the ethos and the point of view in terms of how they play. Um, and, and, you know, don't, don't clear the decks and start anew just because of, of what happened today on three bad plays. Like there was so much good to take out of the way this team played. Use that as a foundation and go from there. Who's your player, Pa, in 2026? And I'm taking Musa off your board. It's already <laughs> been chosen. You can't have 
You can't have Eunice. So of this team. No, I think um, Gio Reyna. I think Gio Reyna, when healthy, when healthy and, and playing at the high level that he can do at Dutchman, we can see what he can become. And I'm hoping that he can take that step. And when he does, that adds again another creativity for the U.S., which is, you can see, was missed today to create those create presence. And I will go as well as, if I may add another one, maybe Brandon Arison could play a part in there, given what he's doing with Leeds, he's going to gain more experience. I think overall, I mean, what U.S. have done in this tournament is a lot to build upon. And to Matt Doyle's point is, the next guy coming in, can that person, or if it's great, can they build off what they've done so far? Because so far they're showing the right pathway. And we've seen it not only in the U U.S., but we've seen it also, the quality of players playing abroad, right, for the U.S. national team. You have a Valencia, you have Leeds, you have Dortmund. These are top clubs in Europe. And having American players, they Chelsea with Pulicis, Juventus, 15, 16 years ago, that, that didn't exist. <laughs> so to see where they five years ago the US players <laughs> yeah, five years are, ago that didn't exist exactly yeah. <laughs> five, five years ago that didn't exist so to see where the uh, players are that is credit to MLS as well the, at the academy level now developing those type of players that is needed the Lionel Messi's of this world the Xavi's of this world can we create more of these players here to make sure that the next generation is set. And when they do that, they will match any European team. When it comes to every everything else, you as have. The facilities you as have. The, 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 the winning mentality you as have. Now, can we improve those technical side of the game in the players to reach that level? There are 15-year-olds maybe watching the stream right now, maybe not, maybe yes. out on the, get in their backyard banging them top 90 that it will be 19 will be maybe the next Eunice Musa. Yeah. There's an army of kids coming through. But that's where coaches become important. Yeah. That's where the coaches become yep. important. That's where the coaches, for me, that's why you are a coach. You are coached coach to help these players reach their potential. And it's not always going to be the easy way, but you need to challenge them. You need to challenge them to make them better every day because as a coach, that is our job. It's the greatest job you can have to see somebody excel under your wing. So coaches also play a big part in what this next coming generation of U.S. soccer players is going to look like. All right. We're going to call this one good. Club and country continues through the tournament. David Goss and Bobby Warshaw and many special guests, including, I believe, Matt Doyle and I today, live on Twitter Spaces and on the MLS Today podcast feed. Uh, a lot to talk about here, a lot to think about, a lot to analyze, and it will be done in the next uh, hours, days, and weeks about the U.S. But for the third straight tournament that the U.S. were in, of course, out there in 2018, to the knockout rounds and out in the knockout rounds. The Netherlands move on, 3-1 winners. Just a little more uh, tactical experience, a little more technical quality, um, and a little more uh, a little more experience in these moments from some big players. So the U.S. are out. What a wonderful run it was. Thank you so much for joining us on these watch-along shows and post-game shows. It's been amazing. Uh, to watch with you and to see your commentary. You made me laugh. You made me cry. You made me tear my hair out as well. So uh, thank you so much, Pa. Thank you to Bruce Arena that was with us today, to Charlie Davies, to you, Matt, for stopping by, and everybody else who's been involved from David Goss and Susanna Collins and Patrice Bernier and Mehdi Bellucci and Stephen Betashore, on and on and on. And Christina Uncle has been our absolute rock when it comes to understanding refereeing, which is always a, a mystery to some uh, out there. So thank you so much. Let's go. Let's go do it again. Doyle, let's go see what Goss and Warshaw have to say about this one. <laughs> Adios, everybody. Congrats to your wife, by the way, Pop. Thank you, boys. Take care. Yeah. Oh, she, oh she's happy now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody's happy. happy. <laughs>